Hey, yo, what's up, guys? We're back with The Connection, where we connect the dots between hip-hop and mental health. I'm Shu. I'm Hendo. And uh, we're going to get right into our uh, first topic. Thanks for the wait, guys. Um, Hold on, fam. You don't want to tell them about the guest. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get into it. <laughs> go ahead. Um. Yeah, go ahead and announce yourself. Sure. Hi, my name is Dana Sink, a.k.a. Dana Diamond. Everybody knows me as Dana Diamond. And we're, we're going to get into, we got a lot of uh, interesting topics we're going to get into later as far as the mental health goes. Um, but right now, I want to dive into best hip-hop movies of all time for Change My Mind today. Um, Hendo, you want to leave this one off? What do you think? I feel like one of the best hip-hop movies of all time is Get Rich or Die Trying. Especially comparing that to like 8 Mile, I feel like Get Rich or Die Trying is way more gully, way more... Um, real and more authentic to fit the same story compared to him. I feel like like I can never You think it's that. more authentic? Yeah. What do you mean what do you mean by that? I feel like like when all that stuff happened, like in the movie, I feel like fifty cent lived a real, real huge like eighty percent of that life. You feel me? There are stuff in I think like, both I think both of those depicted exactly like they couldn't have done. There were definitely dramatizations, like some of the shit didn't. Happen. Some of the stuff they exaggerate every movie. Every movie and every song is exaggerated to a certain I extent. Hate that, though. But I think that they did a really good job with Eight Mile and with Get Rich or Die Trying. I feel like Get Rich or Die Trying should have got an Oscar. It was a very good movie. Um, I grew up on that movie. I've seen it like. The soundtrack's times. fucking amazing. I'm gonna tell you that I'll right now. Go ahead, boy. The soundtrack's amazing. <laughs> you know why we? Um, Hustler's <laughs> Ambition. Like, that beat is amazing. Yeah, bro. bro. It's it's great. Fifty did it justice. Um, do you have any thoughts on this or no? Um, I know Eight Mile and Get Rich or Die Trying. Do you you, 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 you have ones? seen those? Do you? Yeah, so I've seen them. What other hip hop movies have you seen? Have you seen like um State like Rock. Notorious or Straight Straight Out of Compton? Notorious. I haven't seen um, Straight Out of Compton yet. I'd like a, to see that one. Movie. Yeah, so good. that's one of the newer ones, right? Yeah. So you yeah. did you like Notorious? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah, Biggie Biggie was one of my favorite rappers. And who's Who's your favorite rapper? Tupac. Tupac? I love Tupac. Why he just has, nuts. he had a lot to say, like, had a lot reality. To say. Yes. I'm going to take, take Hendo's mic away for a second. Get he up. was uplifting. Good I like, you know, <laughs> it was ghetto, okay. but he was uplifting. <laughs> I want to hear all positive things about my man, yeah, Pac. Yes. Rest in peace, Pac. Yeah, was like by the way, life. by the way, I don't want to dive too deep, but uh, all over the media, and I don't want to get off topic here, but Suge Knight Jr. is basically saying... And Tupac's I don't know, I don't, Tupac is alive, and he's out there with a team trying to prove it. Yeah, he's in Jamaica with Elvis. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to make of it. Um, I personally talked to Shug Knight Jr. myself. Um, you know, he's, he's a cool dude. Yeah. But I don't know what to make of that. I don't, I can't say that I agree. I don't think Tupac's alive, but um, if he is, man... I hope, he finds that album I hope he finds him. I know he's got a couple of albums dropping soon, which I'm you know, excited about. You know, if Pac is alive, he's going to jail, right? But, you know, <laughs> we not seeing Pac ever again. Thank God he's alive, but he going straight to jail. Well, that's obviously why if he's if alive, he he's not here right now. What if he weird diplomatic immunity? Because like, it's been Pac. so long or some shit? I don't know. Yeah, like, um, but so yeah, maybe that's the, what he's waiting for. Word. Maybe yeah, maybe Yo, he's for a what if time. he's really waiting for the statue to run out? And <laughs> off and that's actually out. a really that's a good point. It's actually. gonna go platinum in a day, right? Like, That'll be a banging album, right? It really will be. It really yeah. will be. It'll be years worth of just. That'll be material. bigger than the than yeah. we see yeah. coming look, back. We gotta see if it's a statue. We should look. That up. We really yeah. should to see if like it's a statue of yeah. your death. I think that's a federal crime. I don't know. Is I don't know the law on that. I'd like to look it up. Deaths. Yeah, but like did he up. did he fake it or did everybody else? He might be. Hey, I knew nothing about it. I was in yeah, the middle of the jungle. My PR did this. I just went to Africa. <laughs> I, I'm not dead. What if he's like just sitting somewhere where he can't announce that he's dead? Like, that's, like that's you said, long, like that's long though. Like, that's a long bro. Time. He's been dead. He's been dead for like 15, 20 years, right? Wow. Like, yes. Been over that. Really? What year was it? Ninety five. 96? Wow. wow. That's crazy. So he's been there for like almost a long time. That's nice. He's been there longer than I've been A lot of people miss him and his yeah, music. That is true. Yeah. 
I heard he had like hundreds of songs. Like there's he, definitely penalties for stage been, death. He's been in some uh, well, hip hop movies, right? Hasn't he been in like six movies? Yes, he, he started with Juice. Poetic Justice, right? With uh, Janet, Janet Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's been in Juice. He's been. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what other ones he's been in. Um, but Juice. Juice was, was amazing. Yeah. That's a really. I'm glad that we Who brought Hawk up because Juice is great. Only, I've only seen like parts of that. Um. I don't know, but he's a great actor, too. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, he's been in some movies that I like. My personal favorite of all time, just me personally, was uh, Boys in the Hood. Love I it. I love Boys Love in that Hood. movie. That's my favorite movie. Yeah. Everybody died. Whether it was about hip-hop or not. Everybody died. Just, <laughs> everybody died. You know, uh, as far as, like, black culture movies, it was it was my favorite movie yeah. growing up. I watched that, like, every time it came on, I would watch it, and then it would come on next week, I would watch it again. I, I loved like it. if they ever make a Boys in the Hood, too, Vince Staples should be. Why do you say that? Because Ben Staples actually lives that life, bro. He's from Long Beach. He's like, Snoop Dogg passed him the torch, bro. Like, for repping Long Beach and all that. Like, Ben Staples is really out here, you know, helping people. I really feel like, and he was in Dope, the movie with ASAP Rocky. That's a, that was a pretty decent movie. I feel like I'm not going to lie. Not, I wouldn't put it up there with the movies we were just naming. The movies we were talking about are classics. Mm-hmm. I don't Life think changes. Friday is another classic that I'll never Friday die. Friday is a is a classic Friday. movie. Yes. Um, Even younger kids know that mm-hmm. movie. Like kids mm-hmm. that are ten years old, ten years old today. Because that yeah. just opened up a whole other, whole other uh, realm of movies. Like like Don't Be a Menace. Uh, While well, drinking I, juice in the yeah, hood. <laughs> the, it had the longest. Longest hey, look, for my movie. my crew started hip hop and all that and break dance and Don't with the cardboard be behind the store. Don't be in South Central while <laughs> sipping your juice in the hood. Yes, that was the title of the movie. Yes, and that was a very successful movie. Hysterical, with the title, right? Crazy. So listen, earlier when we were trying to name that song, you were like, "No, the title's too long." But that movie has the longest title of all time. That was a mockery, though. Yeah, that's it true. was. Very it was. Cool. But if you know what, listen, if Hendo. And Shu want to make a track, and the title just takes up the whole back cover of the album. I don't give That'd a fuck. That'd be so fire, bro. <laughs> That'd be like imagine like a, a really deep because song with like the most unserious, like long ass out title. Like yeah. Tyler the Creator yeah. has just one fucking name, like one title, and it's like the 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 episodes of Sharkisha, some shit like that. Like it was crazy, bro. It was it was some shit with Schoolboy Q. Like but, you got to make your own rules, man. We can't, we can't stay, you know, we can't, we can't, like, be confined by the walls or certain rules. Like, we got to break them. You cannot That's be what, confined. You cannot. It stresses a lot of people out. Exactly. It's not who they are. Exactly. Yeah, you just got to, you just got to live gotta your be life you. and do what you got to do. Yes. Um, so who do you think, who's your favorite rapper turned actor or actor turned rapper? That's a good question. So Boys in the Hood's my favorite movie. Did you guys say your favorite? Um, what do you, what would you would say? be between Get Rich or Die Trying, Next Friday, or, um, Next Friday was a good movie too. Um, I feel like we're forgetting so many of them though. That movie with Snoop Dogg, Bones. That was a good movie. That was a fantastic movie. That was a good movie. Where he played like a fucking demon pimp. Um, Those were my top three. I got one and I, I'm forgetting the title of it. Uh, Denzel's in it. Training Day? Yes. That's one of my favorite movies too. Love That's Training definitely Day. definitely a hip hop movie. Is that it's, the one with the train? No, no. Training day is when he's like a he's like a corrupt cop. It's like the only time you he ever trains see the other. The bad guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, he trains okay. the dude to be a crooked okay. cop. Have you peeped and that? And then like, he turns on him. Have you peeped that that Denzel is only a good guy in every movie? Denzel's my favorite actor. He's a great actor. My, he's my favorite he's actor. Favorite actor. actor. Between him and Will Smith. Favorite like rapper actor. turned actor. Um, Ludacris is killing. Me. He's good. Ludacris, Ludacris is Ludacris is a good actor. DMX is a good rapper yeah. actor. Um, Probably one of the best. Childish Gambino really is. is the best because he has an Emmy. He is, but I still have yet to see so much of his work. He has LL. Uh, LL Cool J. LL Cool J mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. yes. He's, been in enough He's about the finest scene. one. <laughs> Technically, we could also put. Um, he was in that one movie with uh, the Huma T. What do you got? Do you guys think Ice T is a good actor? No. Not at all. You can't. You I knew you were gonna say that, so I brought nah, it up. Because he at turned at to an op the minute he tried to play a cop. He, what's what no, is it? Law and Order. Part, he does. Right? He yeah. Played the Law and Order. Yeah. He, he played the cop in one of the best movies ever, though. You, know, you can't forget that. Oh, Jack which Jack was. Jack City, uh, yeah. Jack City, yep. Uh, <laughs> that was a good movie. Chris Rock is the greatest crackhead of all time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he really is. He completely depicted what a crackhead was back in the eighties. Right. So did Izzel from fucking Roger. No, and Samuel Jackson. Wait a minute. Now that's just. 
Yeah. You know who I who the best crackhead to me is? Who? Do you know who that? Tyrone. No, Tyrone. who just killed his scene that, in, in power. Some he was a, he played a crackhead in one of the Kendrick movies. just Kendrick had a was scene. A fire like, did crackhead. you see the scene? Nah, Yo, nah, he's I a, saw it on like, Kendrick Lamar uh just just had a scene in power. In power. Yo, yeah, he great. is yeah, well, such a great, great. bro. He great. is so talented. It was great. Right? It was great. He did a phenomenal he did a he did an eleven out of ten. He was trying not to really Try to think about that was Kendrick because you were so into the part. Yeah. Yes. The that's part great. was so good. It he was killed like, that shit, bro. And you kept looking like, yo, that's Kendrick, but he's killing this part. But you almost forgot it was Kendrick you almost, for a second you because it was forgot. like. I feel like Kendrick is probably the only actor that can get out of the whole rapper actor stigma and do really serious movies that have nothing to do with him being. A he's rapper. so t- he's such a talented person. But this in is general, a, not just. I think aside that, from that, that role that he just did is going to get him yeah, in that position. Exactly. Because it was it was left. He's gonna. Start doing he like killed that, and he's left. gonna, yo, he's, he's gonna, that yeah. just opened up yeah. a bunch it, of opportunities for him. Yep. Yeah, yeah, like he's yeah. gonna do some Titanic. He's gonna be in all Nothing types of that shows. That's what's gonna keep him from being in a box. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And Kendrick is not known to be in a box. Jaden yeah. Smith is a fire ass rapper and a good ass actor. What is he in, by the way? He's I in do know. Pursuit of Happiness. He's in. He's got his own right anime with Will on Smith with his, with his dad. Yeah, he's yeah. got his own anime on Netflix. He has another movie with his dad, and I think that's about it. He got three movies with. Yeah. But his yeah, music nice. is crazy. Yeah. His music is fire. But Jaden Smith's music is really good. I feel like he's a little slept on. He is, bro. And it's just because it's, it's just because a lot of people don't listen to him. They don't give him a shot because of who his dad was. People don't because they don't think he's gonna he, he's gonna live up yeah, to the right. Privilege. People right. think that Jaden Smith really got his career based off his dad, but everything not at all. he's done has been yeah. in, in the, the complete game. opposite. Maybe through connections because of his dad. But Sounds not, nothing like him. Yeah, not influenced not, by it's just Will completely Smith different. just came out with some fire. He killed his son's beat. Icon. He bodied it. What? Yeah. Shoot, shoot did too. By the way, well. <laughs> I'm not gonna. Bro, he it's too early to disclose this information, but um, that's crazy. If he did, I'd like to hear that. He really I love. I have a lot of respect for Will Smith. Love him. He's actually one of the best rappers turned mm-hmm. turned actors. He's the most successful. Yeah. He really is. is. He's first. the best he really man. Is. What? Um, yeah, he's in so many movies. I don't know if you would classify him as hip hop movies, Bro, but is a fire ass movie. every movie he's ever done. Um, no, not every movie. I am Legend. Um, Shark Tales is garbage. I don't even know what that is. Shark Tale is garbage. Not to my daughter, it wasn't. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So it obviously wasn't that garbage. Um, what other movie? What other movies he's been has he? In the he's been in Seven Pounds. He's been in that one movie with Jimmy Smith, and it's like they leave Earth and they have to go back to it. That's what I'm thinking of. What, what is that? Um, After Earth. I forget. But he's he's a great actor. He really is. Will Smith's a great actor. He really gets into the character, yeah, like like Kendrick did. Like a lot of people, they say great actors, like they play themselves very well. But a, a great actor can also just take on a whole different role that has nothing to do with them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You're being someone completely different, like we, we did totally Ali. different character. Yeah, when we did Ali. Ali. You did the Will. You did right. That was Ali. Yeah, yeah when you Ali. when you're not thinking about who yeah. it is. Yeah. And you're like thinking about Ali. Are we forgetting you know Jamie what I mean? Fox too? Jamie well, Fox. Well, how much Jamie Foxx was? Amazing. You seen you seen Ray Charles? Yeah. You done? Know? Yeah. Yeah, you seen Ray Charles. We actually forgot it was Jamie or some part. Really yeah. Until he was funny. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I never saw the whole movie, I saw bits and pieces. Well, it was but great. He sung like him, it was great. acted like yeah. him. You you like you said, you really forgot. It was like how, now, how, did how he, Jim did Carrey he, played that one news reporter. Did he hang out with him or like no, Ray Charles was dead you know, by the time okay. he was there. Yeah, that would have been pretty cool to like really like. I think he's met Ray Charles once or twice. To yeah, meet did. someone I'm sure and kind of has. Yeah, he has, yeah. and he studied all his mannerisms. Yeah, like, that was some a, people do that. that like they're like, man. I want to hang out with the real person before. That's what won you over because he had all his mannerisms. Like the little twitches, the way, yeah. he, moved, yep. he, the way he moves his head around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some people don't leave that character. They stay yeah. that character right. throughout their whole that's life awesome. during the making. I feel like Jim Carrey. That's a great point. He, he's that's one who he's does that. He's a little that. nutty now. Yeah. Because yeah. he's, yeah. he's done all crazy roles, Jim Carrey. And you know what? He's, I don't think he even uses He's script. super woke, though, Jim I Carrey. Yes. I feel like Very Jim smart. Carrey yes. reads the script and then throws it away. He just reads too much into like stuff. He's just, I think no, he's I'm like, takes it to the extreme, yes. Yeah. 
where it's like not healthy. Hey, I almost got that way. I had to stop reading yeah. and researching because yeah. if you Sometimes, know too yeah, much, yeah. it's a little scary. Being intelligent will, being intelligent will really bring you some like <laughs> fucked up. Like, yes. Yeah, it does. Because you just know too much, you can't. Yeah. That's why you can only use your brain like ten percent of it because knowing too much, bro, will literally unlock. Some That's why they say ignorance insane. is bliss. And I don't know about pure ignorance, but like, like you should you should definitely educate yourself and have knowledge Absolutely. on things. But when you know too much, it's not good. Mm-hmm. So, um, all right, cool. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna jump into our next topic. Uh, for what's the wave we're gonna talk about? So I wanted to talk about professional studios versus home studios. Um, there's a lot of successful artists who use their own studios. Wayne. I guess, do you need a professional studio these days in 2018 as you know an artist? Do you need is? professional studios? You know who Skrillex is? Yeah. Skrillex got famous off of a blown out speaker in his living room. Yeah? Yeah. And he used to be in a hardcore band back in the a day. A blown out speaker? One of his speakers were Elaborate blown out. Elaborate on that. One of his speakers were blown out and he still came out with one of the most fire dubstep EPs ever. That's crazy. He actually brought like EDM back to the forefront of music. Him and He him really did. Him. Yeah. Yeah. And you, he actually, like back in um back in 2011, 12, 13, yeah. like he was. And fucking bro, he's actually like I used to watch interviews of him back when he was in his hardcore band, and he was like, I don't even listen to hardcore music. I listen to Michael Jackson, Square Pusher, and Aphex Twin, and like. Reminds me of someone I know. Who? Someone that someone that makes music that sounds like nothing that they listen to. Oh me, bro! <laughs> I listen to mumble rap all day. I listen to like Low Skies and like Trippy Red and like all the shit she hates. Yeah, all bro. the shit. I, I hate it. I love music like that, but I'm like one of the most lyrical rappers in the fucking world. It's really this weird. man is a uh, straight up anomaly. I tell you, because when we drop this project, you're gonna really see like some different shit. So when is this project you guys oh, keep man. talking about? We can't. We can't. We can't disclose too much, but we did a mental health EP. All, we can we can say this to the people. We did a we did an EP about mental health. Um, there's going to be like eight or nine tracks. We're still deciding right now. Um, we're going to cut the fluff out, but it's going to be really dope. Um, that's really all I want to say about it as of right now. Can't to wait to hear it. I'm very excited about it though. But, um, so, yeah, I think nowadays, bro, um, it's a lot easier. It's a lot more accessible. I want to say it's more successful. I want to say it's better. You can be though. Yeah, you really can. You can, can be because a lot of the the guys that I well now I can't say all of them. But we're um, not we're not I'm not it's not like you can like a bring a, a string quartet to your house. Some people can because they have mansions. If you but, look, so here's my thing. It really comes down to just it takes money to make money, right? So if you if you can fund it and you can you know build a nice somewhat semi-professional studio at your home, you don't really need to go into a professional studio and pay to record. And, then you don't need to and that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Life. I don't have time to... I don't want to depend on anybody else. I want to just do it myself and rely on myself hey, when I want to. If I wake up at 2 in the morning and I can't sleep and I want to make music, it's right there. I guarantee you Timberland's you know I mean? whole basement is a studio. And imagine how big his house is. Yeah, anybody that makes it that big that's that dedicated to their craft should have a... If I was to ever like buy that. a big house, that'd be the only reason. Just to have a big basement so I could make a studio. And here's another thing. You don't you don't even need all that equipment because a lot of artists tour and like for example, like Logic Tours and he has like a pretty decent quality mic, but he doesn't have that much. And he's sitting like I saw a video clip the other day where he's holding the mic and he's just spitting and recording like right in the middle of the, the van. Those guys in the middle of the van. There's no there's no there's no acoustic uh, foam pad set up, nothing. All you have to do is send it to an engineer. Let him do it. Bro, his yeah, he's mm-hmm. got his engineers right there with him. You know what I mean? Like, you can literally make they quality do. music they on the road. Bring, he's had with clips. With, he, he ran into Big Sean. He was trying to get Big Sean on a skit on his last album or two albums ago, and he ran into him. Like, they, their schedules conflicted. They couldn't meet up, so he saw him in the, in the airport. And he said, I want you to record it right here. So they went in like the, the corner of the airport. Think about how loud an airport is. Mm-hmm. They went in like the bathroom or the corner somewhere. And they recorded it like right in the hallway there. That's so cool. You know what I'm saying? That's, That's dope. Organic, That's so dope. That's so awesome. dope. I love shit like that. It makes that. you love albums a lot. Yeah. You don't need like this this uh, multi-million dollar professional studio. You don't like need for that. Kanye music, I, it would, the atmosphere. You know, he... Uh, he recorded all of those five albums, made the beats for all of those five albums that he did for good music in a hotel, like in one of the most lavish hotels in Europe, 
just because that's what he needed for the atmosphere to make those expensive sounding albums. Right. You know, he needed to be surrounded by expensive things. And I think and I can see that. I think that's so amazing. That's yeah. the way that Kanye, like he has to adapt. His surroundings need to be just like his music. I love that. And that's what I was trying to tell you the other night. Like, I was just trying to write some off the wall shit. So like sometimes like if you put yourself in a certain environment, you might get a certain vibe or feeling that you wouldn't get elsewhere. You know what I mean? Like if I'm writing in my room, I might write something different than when I'm writing on a balcony somewhere or when mm-hmm. I'm sitting on a rooftop or if I'm on the beach. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It just doesn't so. work like that with me, bro. I literally I'm so I'm so stuck in my mind all the time that like any setting, any time. You don't think I'm stuck place, in my mind? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, <laughs> That's all I do. I'm just saying I'm so stuck in my mind when it comes to being a musician because I'm so used to just being alone that anything, any setting, I don't need a, I don't need an atmosphere to write about something that. Well, it's not about needing it. It's just sometimes you want it because you, you, creatively, you don't know what it would do. It's just like when someone does like a psychedelic drug, yeah. they want to see like, you know what I mean? It's like people when, do that for reasons. When writers wanna, like, go to a cabin in the woods. Yeah. yeah. To be it's honest, yeah. Bro, it's not like a. It's not. It's not like a. Some people, I could see how it could be part of their process, right? Yeah. Like, they have to do it. But for me, it's it's like, I don't have to do it. I it's would just, just want to do it. Yeah. No, it's like, I want to see, like, what what um, originality or, or creativity I can bring to it a little differently. You know what I mean? I'm not going to lie to you, bro. LSD, for me, definitely brought out a new, like, beast in me, lyrically. <laughs> like, I was already really super good. But, like, when I did Acid, bro, like, it just... It made my mind think off kilter when it came to music. That's when I started thinking of music like a person rather than a beat. Break down that uh, concept, because I know what you're talking about. Break down the concept for everybody listening okay. that doesn't so, know what you mean. So, whether you're in a home studio or whether you're in an expensive studio or whatever, when you when you when you think of the the beat like a person, you nurture it more because there's certain there's there's certain instruments and there's certain drums and there's certain keys and there's certain hi hats that flow so well together that make a very well-rounded song and then there's things that you can explore to give the beat its own personality like um like little 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 um compulsive off-kilter um little just like small minuscule changes and effects that you can do for your own music there's so much you can to make it sound like what it needs to be and when you start thinking of the of the beat or the, your lyrics as a person, you start to understand how much nurturing your music needs because mastering and, and making beats and, and writing all need to match up with what kind of atmosphere and what kind of um, message you're trying to bring and what kind of mood you're trying to bring because when you think of albums, a lot of the greatest artists don't just have sporadic beats on their albums. Every beat sounds like a journey. You feel me? Kendrick Lamar is one who does that. Um, Wayne is someone who unfortunately doesn't do that, that I wish would. He doesn't. Um, I wish he would, too, because he can't. Eminem, as much as I don't like his music, does that with his beats. Um, Jaden Smith, even, ASAP Rocky, Childish Gambino, Chance the Rapper, Joey Badass, they all make their albums and their beats grow and have yep. legs so when you when you think of the beat as nurturing it like literally nurturing it like question how, for you like how i feed my son milk is how you need to feed the beat effects and and accents and and and, and that's literacy. a good that's a good analogy so, um i like i like the concept i like how you attack it that way do you think because i was just thinking you were naming a bunch of people do you think jay-z does it honestly i feel like on the blueprints he does i feel like on Magna Carta Black did, Album Black Album I feel like on Watch the Throne that was a very big journey for me Tyler the Creator is actually Tyler the Creator Kanye West and Jay-Z are actually the best ones to do stuff like that because Tyler his first three albums were literally he put in, he put in skits and made them all therapy sessions and from Bastard to, to Wolf you can see how much he healed and grew as an artist because from Bastard to Goblin he wrote about a lot of shock value depressing things and every single song on it sounded depressing. He grew so, a lot. And they had to come they, from that to, to exactly. Flower Boy. Flower Boy is its own person. You feel me? Flower Boy doesn't sound anything like Lump doesn't sound anything like Wolf or or, right. or or Bastard. You feel me? Bastard isn't a person. Bastard 
if, 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 if you want to look at it from that way, that's it. The only way it's approaching is because the therapy sessions bring it together, not the beats. Right. You feel me? That that album is very sporadic. He got better at it with Goblin, then he damn near perfected it with Wolf, and now Scumfuck Flower Boy, that's boom. Scumfuck <laughs> Flower Boy. That's what, the, that's what the album is called, but that's what I'm saying. Like, even is that the full, full <laughs> title? Scumfuck Flower Boy. That's crazy. And um, with albums like Late Registration, College Dropout, that's why all of um, Kanye's beats sound differently. All of his albums sound different because they're all different people. And you can, and it translates because That's Kanye is a different person. And every, every single album one. Cycle. He always. By the way, did you hear the latest one? I didn't listen to it yet. What? I didn't even give it a shot. Kanye came out with a new album. He dropped another album. I think. Really? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's what everybody told me, so I don't know. But people weren't enthused about it, so I liked Ye. I yeah, he's care. lost a lot of people. I loved Ye, I and that was, what, four months ago, three months ago, he yeah. dropped? I love Ye. I don't care. Yeah. And I love, the, I love Kids See Ghosts with Kid Cudi. I love, I'm a huge Cudi fan, you too. You can't sit here and tell me straight to my face, any person, that Kanye isn't one of the, or probably the most influential person in hip-hop. He's not the most, but he's one of the most, and he he's never done albums that have sounded the same other than the first three, which are College Dropout through like Graduation. It's probably, it's probably because they can't Because he changed so much, yeah. and they're... Yeah, people just get stuck in the you past. You can't get stuck in the past. You have to progress, because these other grudges. artists are progress. you got to keep up with your peers. People look man. at their personal life. Right. The media has a lot to do I with it. Yeah. you got to move on. Yeah. Some people are stuck in the 90s and the early 2000s, and unfortunately, Kanye's not going to sound like he did on College Dropout or even Graduation. He could. But... But I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear him recreate that. I don't want to hear something new. I don't want to Right, I want those for what they are and keep them there when I want to go back and listen, but I want him to grow as an artist. Okay. You can't get stuck. Back to the topic. Would you would you prefer to be in a in your own house, just in your own studio comfortably, or would you because Wayne said something very interesting on this PSA he had. He was like, I have a studio in my crib, but you know what I do? I get up in my car and I drive fifteen minutes to the studio because I don't want to ever get complacent. Mm-hmm. Because okay, so he's saying that he said he can make music. He might if he was by himself. He has nobody hold like it's an accountability thing. He feels like he might get lazy at his at his own crib. Mm-hmm. Like he might eat or like lay down or you know what I mean. Take a phone call. Like he might get distracted. Mm-hmm. And I can he relate. He has to schedule out time to go to the studio. Yeah. Still, even with the studio in his crib. I can relate and I can't because I understand what it's like to be distracted. I have ADHD, so naturally I I'm gonna be distracted, but. Um, You're like, my oh, work look, a squirrel. Ethic, <laughs> right, like, I'm, I'm all over the I'm thinking about a million things at once. I know. But my thing is, like, when I'm when I'm passionate about something, I'm so dedicated to it, and I'll just, you know me, I'll just sit there and write all day and all day. I've seen Like, it, yeah. all day. Like, one song, two songs, three songs, and I won't stop. But, if that, yeah, if that's what he wants to do, then that's that's for him. That's what he needs to do. Um, me, personally, I like I like the atmosphere of a home studio because I can do whatever I want. Now, some people are just in that mode when they jump into a studio, regardless if it's professional or a home studio. They get in a professional studio and they're just in studio mode where they feel like they can do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. Me, I just don't feel that 100% comfort. Like, I, I don't have all those things attached to me. Some people need to smoke. Like, they have a whole process. They need to smoke. Some people need to... Some people need to have sex. In the, like I, you know what I mean? I was <laughs> thinking drink, but okay. Some people will... Post Malone drinks. Some people, time. some people, some people, um... I mean, what, what do I care? Uh, we don't, we don't, we don't hold that. The whole time he did acid rap. Right. Like, people have a process. Like, people do some, some crazy outlandish shit. Like, it's not like that for me. But I just like being in the comfort of my own home because I can just do what I want. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't have anybody mm-hmm. telling... I don't have to worry about... You know, me offending someone else or whatever. Or running do out my of thing. studio time. Or running out of studio time. Or paying people money. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I don't have to worry about any of that. Work with Timbaland and Scott Storage. And yes. Yeah, yeah. And but he, for me, I don't want to be on someone else's time. I don't like being rushed. I don't like people. You know what I mean? Like if yeah. if we're in the same, um, if we're synced up together and we're in the same like thought process and we're thinking and and everything's like, you know, aligning. That would work, but if I'm if if someone's like yo go do this yo go do that, I want to just naturally and organically do it myself and take you know if I want to take 
15 extra minutes to write this verse, I want to do that. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? That's what Pusha T and Puff had to do. Like he Sometimes people can't work with Puff. with each other, you know yeah. what I mean? Well, Push and, Push and Puff, they uh, they were having, like, this dispute on Crutches, Crosses, Caskets, or, like, one song on, like, Darkest Before Dawn, and, and Push was like, bro, like, I want to get this song done, like, I need all these words, and Diddy was like, you don't need to say all that. Like, it's not necessary. You feel me? You can make that more compressed and say exactly what you need to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um... So did That's he, why he, did he end up he, listening to he, Diddy or he not? Got, he did, he did. He, he ended up, you know, like, rewording his wow. verse. And, um, and I would take the advice from Diddy because obviously he's Diddy. very successful and he's made a lot of people very successful, so. Yeah. And that's why he had that line on Crutches, crutches Cross His Caskets. He was like, take my time to crap shit because I don't like back and forth with Puff about rap shit. You feel me? Mm. I never knew that. Yeah. That's, he that's made every producer that he went to because that album was very expensive to make. Timbaland, Diddy, DJ Mustard, and I think somebody that's a, else. It's like a multi-million he made dollar them album. All, that he made them all go back to their B-sides. Yeah. All of those songs are B-sides. Like their, their, their OG shit. Yeah, yeah. Like when they were recording yep. the big and shit. Yep. Like that. So hmm. I think I think it's I think it's um very conducive to work in somebody else's pocket and work on somebody else's time just to challenge yourself but when you're you're being pushed to your limit that's when shit kind of gets iffy because push had to go to every single producer knowing that they make all these great club hits and be like i don't want any of your famous shit i right. don't want any of your top 40 shit. no mainstream i want everything that you've never released exactly. and they all had to you know diminish their egos and be like all right you feel me right because push had this one story he was like Timberland called me in the middle of the night just playing a beat. He was like, I'm the greatest ever to do this. You feel me? I'm the greatest. Da, 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 da. Because Timberland was having trouble with going back to like his B-side flow and his that whole vibe. And then he sent, he he just played Push the Beat and we just started yelling in the phone right. like how we do with each other. Right. You know, like whenever we write like a really <laughs> successful verse. And I think that was really conducive for not only Tim, but Push because everything that Push makes, as much as it is expensive luxury rap and as much as the beats go with his personality, it takes time for him to do stuff like that because a lot of top 40 producers don't want to go back to what people didn't want. Right, I mean? but exactly. Push is, Push is someone who... Right, they already people. found that like successful lane and they don't want to come back to what didn't work. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Um, That's why so, I love people like No ID and DJ Premier. You gotta you gotta be versatile though. You never put yourself in a in like, a certain box. Bro, or... DOA is a top forty hit, but it's such a hip hop rooted song. Right. There's a lot of those. I love that beat, bro. Yeah. It's ridiculous. The drum roll is crazy. Like no idea that his thing on that. And um, this one beat that DJ Pre- Unorthodox by Joey Badass that DJ Premier did for uh, Joey. DJ Premier has never made a bad beat in his life. I'm kind I'll of argue t- that. I'm, I'm kind of tired of the DJ scratches and the voice samples nope. and stuff like that. I'll never get tired that's of it. That's not good for when you're out dancing because that's it changes the, the whole the groove and you're like, what? Yeah. I, I look for We can't ever get rid of that. Like that. We can't get rid <laughs> no, of that. You can't. Once we get rid of that, it's like the, the concrete, the foundation. So, it, is. it is. You cannot get rid of that sound. That sound needs to stay in hip-hop. Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't have to be on everything, and it's not anymore, unfortunately, because this mumble rap shit's taken over. But we we have to have that. This is have why have I disagree with you about mumble rap taking over. It is. Because, hold on. Because You're going to say something about lo-fi. No. Because people like Daniel Caesar exist still. And his his music is very, very Erica Badu-ish, even very boom bap at sometimes, very soulful. And he gets so many hits. The weekend. But is made, Daniel Caesar, are you trying to say he's a mumble rapper? No, I'm not saying he's a mumble rapper. I'm saying that his lane still exists. The, the lane oh, that, there's a bunch of different lanes. I'm saying the lane that people don't think exists in rap anymore still exists very prominently. There's so many subgenres of hip hop. You just there. have to understand that you need to grow from the boom. You need to make boom bap evolve just as much as mumble rap has evolved. That's why JIT exists. That's why Kendrick exists. That's why J. Cole exists. That's why Chance exists. That's why Vince Staples exists. And that's, that's why, why I love and that's why I love all exists. those. If it wasn't for if it wasn't for Joey, this boom bap shit would have died in two thousand seven. That's why Nas came out with that album, Hip Hop yep. Dead. When you have when you have the artists that kept it alive for so long, like And Joey's twenty two. Like Jay Z and Eminem and, and, and Nas and all those guys and they start, you know, they're not as as consistent as they once were. These new guys needed to come out. If we didn't have that, we let me tell you who's the best 
lyrical person who still stays in the pocket of number one. Chance. Because he, he has song, he has songs with Young Thug, and they're very mumble rapish, but he still goes. And he 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 gets off that mumble rap flow. And he doesn't he does he does he ever lack on lyrical ability? Yeah, nobody's ever gonna call Chance a mumble rapper. You, you can't. He's not. You can't. He's not. Stuff like stuff like problems is mumble rap is. You can call him a gospel rapper. I've heard people say that, which can be offensive to some. What do you call Busta Rhymes? Makes sense. Busta Rhymes is the greatest. Busta like, Rhymes it, to me is just the most animated. Okay. Artist. He's like, because he, remember we were talking in the studio last night. Um, Mystical is super. About animated. doing shit very different, like mm-hmm. the delivery being very different, mm-hmm. the way he said stuff. That's a great question. Um, he's just so animated. Like, who else was as animated as Busta? You know what I mean? Slim Shady was back in the day. Yes, he was. Shady, mm-hmm. Mystical, P.D. Pablo to a certain degree. Yin Yang Twins. <laughs> I love when you just bring people up like that that don't deserve to be in the same <laughs> Why? We're talking about you Busta and Eminem, and, and you just go bring up P.D. Pablo, Petey bro. Pablo Come on, five. dog. Oh, Petey my Pablo God. Um, P.D. Pablo had, like, two or three good songs in, like, the 2013-14 era. Super I'm over that. Nelly is super animated. Um, Pharrell, oh, super um, Missy Elliott. Missy Elliott. Love her. Love her, Love too. Her. Danny Brown is very animated. Kendrick Lamar is super animated. Um, yeah, I mean... In, Wayne is super animated. Vince Staples is kind of very different. I don't know if I would say animated. He's very different. His um, shit is retarded me off kilter. But, yeah, I mean, Buss, I think, did it the best. Yeah. I think he really did. He I did. think Ludacris probably took it, can take it over Buster for me. Yeah. I'm gonna knock your lights out. Get the fuck out of my way. His voice projection was amazing. Yeah, but just Buster Rhymes' visuals. That was, that was my was like, crazy. you know, that motto song that goes through your head when you're walking down the street. Yeah. That was my song. I love that. <laughs> that was everybody when you're like yeah. stuck in traffic. And, yes. And bro, I wanna l- 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 lick you from oh, your head man. to your toes, and I wanna move for the best. See that when I hear that, that toes. reminds me of um, when I was a kid. Going to uh, Skater's Choice, like skating at the skating rink. Why was that song on with Swan Children? I don't know, man. I was like, I was like 12, 13 years old, and that's what we were listening to, like skating. Skater's oh, Choice. Okay. A lot of music happened at the Skater's oh, yeah. Choice. But a lot of stuff did happen. Oh, a lot, a lot of stuff of did happen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Chance knows. Yeah, Chance yeah. knows. <laughs> Chance knows. Well, Damn right. I see some shit at the roller rink, bro. Uh, yeah. Really, and school dances. Mm-hmm. Well, Every Friday and Saturday night we were there as kids, like in mm-hmm. middle school. That was my my thing in middle school. All right, so I'm I'm definitely rocking with home studios. If home studios can, all day. If you're as talented as Tyler the Creator or Kanye West, you can definitely pull off a home studio. If you have the work ethic to hold yourself accountable and you don't need it's other so cool. you don't need other people to push you, um, I think home studios are the way to go. Yeah, most definitely. that's what I think. But there's it's, nothing it's, wrong with it's more inexpensive. Like um, you can get more creative, I think. You probably get more done. It just depends on who you are at the end of the day. I'll leave it at that. It depends on what type of artist you are and what you need. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. That's Most all. Definitely. So, uh, I'm excited about this next topic. Spitball. I've been dying to get to this. All right, so for spitballing today, I want you to get involved. Um, it's So the title is called Keeping Up with the Joneses. Yeah. And if you, for anybody out there that doesn't know. You heard how he just put his phone down? About yeah, I love the, the keeping Joneses. up with the Joneses. I am not Joneses one to keep up. Exactly. Yes. And you know what? I I need I need everybody's input on this. I want your help. But let me just start this one off. So, keeping up with the Joneses basically means for anybody that doesn't know what that means, that means like the whole world, like society, shows you. And this is part of the reason I was telling you guys before the show started why I hate social media. Okay? There's a there's a false reality. There's like this uh, false image that's created. Yes. And people think that you have to, they think life's just one big competition and you got to mm-hmm. compete with everybody around you. You know, like the guy up the street just got a, a new Mercedes Benz. So you feel like, damn, well, if he got that, then I got to go work harder. I got to go take a second job or I got to ask my boss to give more hours or I got to go find a better job or I got to find a way to, to hustle and, and get that money or, or outdo this guy and get a better car. Mm-hmm. Um, this guy's got this guy's got a beautiful wife. Um, I got to compete with him, and you know I might have the the most amazing woman by my side already, inside and out. 
but you know, especially for who she is, not just a piece of meat, not her body, right? But we were now I got on this show. That's a trophy now, wife, right? And now, now I, I've I gotta been go one. get a, a a more beautiful woman because he's got the the, the so called dime piece, and and mm-hmm. I got to compete with that now, mm-hmm. right? Because you know, I I where he's got a nicer suit than me. Now I got to go spend more money on a suit, or do you see like just the examples I'm given? These are just a few examples. Let me tell you. Um, in our society, that's that's what's taught. It's taught that you have to keep up with the Joneses. You have to keep up with the next man or the next woman and always try to outdo them. And that's a very dangerous way of living. Very. It's very making people lose their minds. Because, yes, you lose your mind, and that's not what life's about. No. At the end of the day, life's about happiness. You will mm-hmm. never be happy chasing that never-ending. It's just something's going to be, the carrot's going to be mm-hmm. dangling over your head your whole life. Mm-hmm. You're never going to catch it. Right. You're never going to get to it. Looking at somebody else's life, you're going to miss out on your own. Right. Mm-hmm. You People need to understand, you're your only competition. Nobody else. You should only compete with yourself. You should always, every day, you should look to prosper and get better and just become the best version of yourself. Absolutely. Fuck comparing yourself to anybody else. You should never do that. That's just my take on it. Um, and I'll dive a little deeper, but I just want to hear you, you guys open up about it. I'm going to let Dana grab this one. Uh-oh. Um, yeah, people seem to lose a sense of themselves looking at what everybody else, what's good for everybody else um, is not good for you. Everybody has their own journey in this world. We are all created who we are as we grow. And when you're looking at somebody else, that person is not you. They didn't go through what you went through. So you right. need to take what you went through and you need to put that out there to help others go through what they go through. Uh, I've never really been about beat the Joneses. I'm happy with what I have. I leave a, live a simpler life. I myself, having PTSD, cannot live like others live, get up at 7 o'clock, go to work, run the baby to daycare. That would cause way too much anxiety on me as a person and with my mental illnesses. It doesn't work. Right. My healing is for me. My world is for yourself. me. Absolutely. And other people need to understand other people will live a lot easier if people go back to mind your own business, help somebody if they look like they need help. Don't, you know, we were driving down the road the other day and some lady was talking to himself and my friend said to me, hey, that person talked to himself. And I just kept looking forward and was like, that's not my business. That person is who they are. Like, exactly. don't, don't pull me into that. <laughs> I, I love, I love that that, um, that's your like perspective yeah. on, on life because yeah. if a lot of people thought that way the world would be a better place you know what yes. I mean? you can't you can't just look at people walking down the street and just like you know just just shit on them because no. they're different or because no. they're they're doing something out of the norm or something that you wouldn't do right. you don't know their walk of life you don't exactly. know what they've been through you don't know shit. exactly exactly you know what i mean so exactly. we should never pass judgment on another person because they're different or what we call crazy just because it's out of our norm exactly the reason i wanted to hear dana go first is because i love i love this topic and i love when women speak on top topics like this because in society a lot of women are meant to feel like they need to compete with not only men but other women yes and unfortunately our predecessors genetically speaking have made society that way mm-hmm. you know and um when I hear a woman understand that she doesn't need to keep up with not only not only men or society in general, but other women especially, mm-hmm. that's something that I think is very powerful mm-hmm. because inadvertently women are made to compete with other women just like black people are made to compete with other black people. Because right, for women, there's the, they have their own... Examples they could give a like, lot of stress. I gotta get the, the trophy husband. A lot of stress. With the, with I gotta get money. my nails done. I gotta keep my hair right. I gotta, get the I gotta be smelling bag. good. I gotta shave. I gotta. My girlfriend doesn't do it. I gotta look better than her. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. you know, every it's a rough way to live. Like has, all that, all that bougie shit. Every, mm-hmm. alpha, every outfit my girlfriend has is either from Goodwill or Ross. And when we started dating, and she used to come over to my house, I was like, that outfit is crazy fire. Well, let me let me explain mm-hmm. something for all the people that are listening and like, don't understand. That's the. Whether she actually can afford more expensive stuff or not, some people that can afford it and choose not to, that's the mindset of a millionaire. That's the mindset mm-hmm. of someone successful. Mm-hmm. Because success, here's what people don't realize. And I, I want you to continue. I don't want to cut you off, but I just wanted to say this. What people don't realize is you can actually, um, if you have that mind, like if you have the money to, to spend on something and you don't actually spend the money on it, that's, that's, that's wealth. 
that means you understand the value of a dollar. Mm -hmm. That means you're going places. Like a lot of people will try to, you know, like we're talking about, like compete and, and, and spend the money. That's not good. You know what I mean? How much can you have? Right. Honestly, In boxes not, that you don't even so use. Love you. Like, exactly. A lot of people, bro, it's a, it's a sickness and rap because dudes go out and buy $100,000 chains and $300,000 cars to look richer than someone else. But, but if they're you just more broke. Yeah, if you just didn't buy that, you would actually be richer than that man. That's what I was, mm -hmm. that's what I was just going to say. So, like, the people that look like they're more rich are more broke. Mm -hmm. It's a false image. It's, it's, not, it's not real. Exactly. How many times yeah. do you it's ever not. see Jay-Z wear a chain now? Because well, he, after he, Kim Kardashian got robbed, uh, I probably think they would Kim all Kardashian like. Got robbed? Yeah, it's a while ago. Yeah, in, like London or something. Yeah, she right? got tied up in the tub or something, didn't yeah, she? You know that? What do you mean? Yes. She got tied up in a tub. Yeah, Kanye stopped. He was in the middle of. Uh, it was in he a was secure a building. He just literally said, mm -hmm. "I have to leave," and his fans were mad. She I was supposed to. She, got kidnapped? she was in yes. her wherever they were staying, penthouse or whatever they stay for, like, in. For money or something. And they broke it. Well, they came. It was an inside job, wasn't it, or yeah, something? Yeah, something like that. Somebody who worked Someone there or whatever got okay, somebody in. Kanye Did they put that person in jail? Well, she got a little upset over it. You know, she's. Probably still damaged you from that. Like I'm sure that's stuff it. that stays with you your and whole life. You know what's crazy? The fact that this happened to Kim and people try and disrespect the shit out of her and have been trying for years yeah. and tried to dehumanize her and try to call her stupid and all this. Why do you shit. think? Why do you think? Listen. Why do you think on their? Sh why do you think they have to be like perfect? They don't though. What? No, no, no. Why do you think they try to be perfect though? Why? It's because they're insecure. They mm -hmm. try to be perfect because mm -hmm. people bring them down, and that's what I have. I have a problem with. Like we were talking about earlier, I have a problem with people on social media bringing other people down. You don't know that mm -mm. person. You don't know what they've been through. Don't put that person so down. People kill themselves yeah, all the time over what exactly. somebody says to them. And that's part of keeping unless you're going to pick well. someone up, you should never. You should never have shit to say unless you're helping someone up. Exactly. Don't say like, shit unless unless you're actually reaching down to help that person up. Don't even look at them or say shit. You know, a mm -hmm. lot of bullying happens because people want to impress other people. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Yep. Like, right. The and they want to hide their own scars, too, yeah, right. in the same. They don't want people to right. see that they're damaged, so they come up as a tough person. It's like I was when, there. It's like when someone's... Yeah, I, I was this. a I was a bit of a bully at a young age, and then I got defensive of everybody yeah. around me. Yeah, I was kind of a bully in high school. Mm -hmm. Not like not like a bully that was picking on like like the quote unquote nerds. Yeah, but like I was just never nice to anyone. If I didn't like you or if I knew you were an it's asshole, just anger I issues. Would do my best to make mm -hmm. you, feel like garbage. you like the underdog. Yeah, you stuck yeah. up for the underdog. That's how I am. And sometimes it wasn't even really sticking up for the underdog because I've met you know dudes I didn't like that were. Dorks and geeks, and they were just assholes. I didn't like them either. You feel me? Mm -hmm. yeah. But like, when it came to my like strategy of bullying, if I did not like you, no matter what walk of life or what clique you came from or what ethnicity you were, I was going to make you feel like garbage. I was bullying anybody. I wasn't sticking to the stigma of high school I bullying. Say, and I'm just mm -hmm. like, you gotta be. Every, oh, man. if if you are a high school like jock type dude and you came up to me and said something about my skinny jeans or about like how my clique looked because I was like grouped in with like all the goth kids mm -hmm. if you were that dude who came up to me and tried to make fun of my friends or tried to say anything and you were from any clique or any walk of life you were the one I would make on. your fucking life hell yeah. Yeah. yeah there was one time where someone called me a faggot and I literally and he was like a jock looking kind of dude and I literally took his tray of like food and strawberry milk and poured it all over him knowing that the kid could beat my ass and then I looked at him. I didn't move. And I was like, what are you going to do now? Like, what are you going to do? Because I was in high school, bro, I was really famous for threatening to kill people. Like, I would look at you. Oh, that won't work today in school. Huh? That won't work nah, today nah. in school. Nah, nah shit, <laughs> shit has changed a little bit. Yeah. They could, the teacher used to be able to hit you. Like, if that, that shit will not fly today. Yeah. You know what I mean? They lay a hand on you and they're done. Yeah. They know that. But, um, but, yeah, dude, I was, I was an EVK bully. Like everybody killer bully. Like I was, I was coming at. Did anybody. you just make that up? No, it's been a term for like decades. But I've been, yeah, bro. I've so, been so, so your I take mean. on um, on keeping up with the Joneses? I think um, and the biggest, I think the biggest margin for keeping up with the Joneses, as it is called, is for black people and women and. 
That's about it because, like, no, nah, it's what everybody. It is what, what everybody. everybody. It doesn't matter. It's not to a certain demographic. It is just what society teaches anybody. Because you could take a very, you could take a very. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about like uh, look at, race. Hold on. Look at Timmy's life in Fairly Odd Parents. He was in a middle class neighborhood. Had a. I don't friend. remember that. Uh, well, let me let me give, give me a better analogy. He had a no, because Timmy had a pretty all right life except for Vicky. She was kind of a twat. His parents kind of didn't pay attention to him, but like. As far as his financial stability goes, his family was all right. You feel me? He had video games, he had toys, he had all that. But his dad would go and look over at Dinkelberg's life because Dinkelberg just had a little bit more. And he hated, he was a Dinkelberg hater. He was a hater. His dad was a Dinkelberg hater and would literally look at Dinkelberg's life and try and be better than the Dinkelbergs. I swear yeah. to God. That's so keep jealousy, up, that's exactly though. keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah. Yeah. You look at, uh, you know... You're scrolling through your feeds on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, and you're seeing people don't show you the bad shit that goes on in their lives. Mm-hmm. Unless they're really. I Someti- do. Sometimes people do. Sometimes people do. <laughs> I get do. told to get my post down but all I'm the time. But I'm going to tell you right now, 95 to 98% of people, I don't know what the statistic would be, but um, the majority of people don't share the bad stuff because they mm-hmm. don't want you to think. That everybody wants you to think they're doing well. They're doing great. Right? So they share all the good shit. And now when you're looking, you see all that positive, good shit going mm-hmm. on. You're like, damn, they're living the life. You know, he's he's uh, sending pictures, going on vacation every mm-hmm. other couple months. Um, you know, she's she's always getting new cars, and she's got all this money. And, and, yeah. and then they start getting feedback. into, why ain't she home with the kids? How's she going on vacation for right, a week? Right. And she should and be home taking care of her kids and blah, blah, blah. It's just a big mm-hmm. competition. It's it a net, turns it's into a, a mean, yeah. nasty, it's so yes. Stupid. And it's just a, it's just a never ending vicious cycle. Yeah. And it just doesn't. It's like stop. laundry. But the yeah. It's like you reason. empty the basket and there's stuff in there before you even finish it. The reason exactly. I think it's most prominent in women and black people is because those are the two groups of people throughout since the industrial revolution that really had their rights stripped away from them, and and had to feel like they needed to compete. Because like when you, when, especially me, bro, like because I grew up in a in a in a in a um, mostly African American neighborhood. We would really hate on each other and pick on each other if one of us had more or if one was more intelligent. It was like the crab in a barrel. But it's like the same the, thing if you're, you take, like I was going to give you earlier, take an example of two wealthy, rich white men. Mm-hmm. They're still competing to this day. Mm-hmm. I don't care if they're 40, they're I don't still, care if they're 20, I don't care. Are they not still sitting at the table together enjoying the same meal? Most Sometimes of the time they're they not. Are. It depends on the circumstances, if they're, they're friends like, or not. P- but they're still PC in competition. more successful than Nas. If, if if one guy has a certain car, the other guy feels like he has to one-up him because maybe he's looking like, damn, what, are, what is my wife going to think because he has the better car, or he's got a better job, or he makes more money, or um, I got it. You know what I mean? Like, it's just everybody. That does just happen in, competition. In, in higher everything. economic everything. Um, atmosphere. Yeah, there's no, there's, no, um, there's no social status and demographic that will – you know, classify you, you as your. It's just the whole world is, is the Rothschilds just competitive nature. Do I think Soros, all those no, elite? I don't, I don't think they have that complex. No, because they they, they own every like. They're more like the we're their chess pieces. Yeah, yeah. Kind of a they're, they're they have, we feel like that. They have to be strategic so nobody else yes becomes too empowered yeah. to to take that over. But I don't think I don't even see the likelihood of that ever happening. Are too rich. No. I don't even want to talk about it on the show, but they have money. They have money that we don't even know exists. Yeah, yeah we don't even so know much. nothing about that kind of money. <laughs> we're talking about we're talking about countries going in debt, and they got money that could keep own that. the country. Right. Exactly. That's so moving right along. Um, yeah, I'm just don't you ever bring it up on this show again. Uh, <laughs> don't be going. Don't get me involved in that. Fuck around and disappear or some shit. Um, Oh shit, <laughs> guys! If you uh, if you don't see me next week, just know I love you guys. <laughs> this show is for you guys. You know, sorry we didn't you didn't get to see it uh, grow legs and you know really take over. But um, can I have your Audi? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, yeah. So that's my take on it. Just uh, a lot of it has to do with like your mindset. Just change your mindset. Like we don't need to be in competition with each other. Absolutely not. And that shit, that, here's another problem. I just want to say one more thing. It's now affecting younger kids because as social media take, takes off more and more, as things evolve, 
music plays a strong role in it as well because it's put in this false image that the, the shit that I don't like, you know the shit that I don't like, is because of the message in it. And these mm-hmm. kids are actually trying to, to imitate that mm-hmm. and, and emulate it. And, yep. and You know what I mean? I don't like that because now you have you have to watch out for your daughter and, and you have to watch I out I just for got son. her off of the grown-up YouTube. Apparently, I didn't know there was a kid's one. Okay, she was learning right. things that she didn't need to saying? learn. So things she said the other day she was watch- going to be on YouTube. I'm like, wait, what? No, you're not. <laughs> you're three. <laughs> exactly. Like, you're three. Like my, I just found out my mom texted me the other day, and she's like, hey, um, she's like, do you think it's time that your sister – because we always joke around because I started at a young age watching like horror movies. I was exposed at a young age. Probably not good finished. for everybody. Probably not good. But she said, do you think it's time for you know to show her some horror movies? And oh, she here she already, check this out, she's got an iPad. And she's like, oh, mom, I already watched uh, Halloween. All my. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's okay. not cool. That's not okay. That's not okay. By it's herself, young, could you see her with a flashlight under right. the blanket watching that's that scary okay. movie? I don't know if I'm okay with that. So, like, how old is she? Ten? she was 11, I'd be a little bit more, like, comfortable with her, but... I still can't watch The Exorcist, and I seen that when I was very young, that, and, yeah, they're creepy. I don't know, I I just think, like, there's, the kids are being exposed to too much shit, and shit moves quicker these days. And they don't understand that it's not reality. Exactly, so, and that's the problem, so that false reality... Like, you got kids trying to... You got kids competing at younger ages mm-hmm. now. Kids coming in, like, who's got the who's got the Apple Watch? Who's mm-hmm. got the nicest iPad? Like, these kids are starting at, like, six, seven, eight years old now. Yeah. You know? And that's crazy, because the, 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 the adults never learn um, the concept of, of, you know, keeping up with the Joneses. They never understand it. Mm-hmm. So now they're basically just, like, they think it's okay to... They think it's the norm to go buy your kid an iPad at six because all the kids in school have them, and now they're coming home complaining that they want an iPad. Mm-hmm. So you're like, oh, all the other kids have them? Mm-hmm. Fine. And you just give in. Yeah. And that's that's what's wrong with our society. Keeping up with the Joneses is a, a big, it's a big issue. My mom would have said, I don't care, I'm not their mother. Right. <laughs> Word. Facts. Right. That's Get crazy. over it. Old school shit. Mm-hmm. You know, they didn't put up with that. Mm-hmm. And that's why we, we, you know, we really, like understand the, the real meaning of life but I just think like this shit just bro. it just gets worse my mama grew up poor as hell you feel me she had to grow some of her own food because she was so goddamn mm-hmm. and I don't think ever in her life as the Christian woman that she is has ever coveted somebody else's shit and if she ever did she just turned it into motivation to get what she needed right. not what she needed to impress anybody else you feel me she turned to keeping up with the Joneses or crab in the bucket syndrome to, to actual success and motivation because she would she refused to sit in a in a in a in an environment where people had so little but still had to hate on each other. Mm-hmm. You feel me? That was just not flying with my mom. She was taught better than that, and she taught herself better than that. And she tried to instill that within me and my siblings. And we we fell short on certain things. You feel me? Because there's sometimes where I see certain people who are doing better in music, and it and it, and it kind of gets me jealous. But then, like I said, you feel me? My mom taught me how to use that jealousy or use that coveting and turn it into motivation to not only get... To fuel the success. To fuel, the, to, to fuel not only the success, but the self-validation I need. Right. So when I reach that success, or even before I reach that success, I can stop looking at that man and wanting what, we, and wanting what he has so much. Because my life ain't his. Mm-hmm. God, will provide my, God will provide for my life. For you are your only is. competition. Exactly. If you live life like that, you're your only competition. Someone recently said that to me, but it, it just stuck with me. Like, I've heard that, like, my whole life. But someone recently said it, and I thought about it on a deeper level. If you only compete with yourself, you, you'll you always be happy. Mm-hmm. Because you'll just look at who you were mm-hmm. and how you can improve mm-hmm. along the way, and, and you won't be upset. Because if you're looking at everybody else, you, you can never be that person. Right. You never will be on any different spectrum. I say be the black sheep out of everybody's family. Yeah. Be your own person. Be different. Absolutely. We need different. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, what's our mental health talk? So, um, so I want to introduce, uh, our, our guest. We have a, uh, amazing guest on the show today. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Let everybody know your name and, um. Hi, I'm Dana. Everybody knows me as Dana Diamond, so we'll just go with that. Oh, okay. That's so 
Yeah, well, no, that's my maiden name. And really? all my Facebook page are people I grew up with, um, which is a lot of the reason I'm doing this, too, is because a lot of people don't understand who I am. You know how rumors go around about people. I want you to hear it from me. You know what I mean? My story, my healing, where I am, not hear somebody else's yap, yap, yap. (laughs) You know what I mean? You're the only person that can tell your story. Exactly, and that's anybody, and you should go to the person whose the story is about. So I just want to quick go through, you know, some of the things that I have been through life so that people can get a little bit of understanding and know that there are people out there who understand you. Um, these mental illnesses that are, you know, just coming out, they're not new. I've had PTSD my whole life. Um, I just didn't know it was PTSD. In my 20s, I got told I had anxiety disorder. So I really never knew until in my 30s. So I really never got to heal because I really didn't know what the issue was. Right. Um, people don't understand, um, like for myself. The first memory I ever had was being tied in the crib. A hyper child being tied in the crib. Um, molestations throughout the family. Um, violence. I grew up in a very violent family to where, you know, there was five kids and four of us. It was my father beating our mother up, our mother beating us up, and us beating each other up. So it was just very volatile, very negative. Um, you know, uh, Dealing with that and fighting through life for a child is very hard. You kind of feel like you're in, like, survival mode or something. Always in survival mode. Yeah. Absolutely, and that's exactly what it is. We're in survival mode. We survive for the day. Right. We'll get through this day. Um, but, yeah, being uh, molested from children and other adults and, you know, being raped at 14 and having all that happen to me before I was ever even a woman or knew anything about marriage, love, sexes after marriage, and all that good stuff. Right. Um, yeah, we were in Catholic school, but that didn't stick. The other chaos in the day when the teachers also hit you. So you didn't even have safety going to school. Yeah. You know, so um, it created a lot of anxiety growing up. Um, I was called emotional. Now I know it to be empathic because I don't only feel what I go through, but I will also feel what you go through and what you go through. And if you tell me your story, I'll feel the whole thing as if it's me. So um, it was a lot. Uh, Bad divorces. My first divorce I went through three weeks after my mom died. My mom died when I was 29. Um, Very critical part of my life is when I started to have kids. And, and do that family thing. Um, so I wound up getting into wrong relationships with the wrong people, looking for the wrong things. Right. You know, I wanted the security. Because you didn't really have a, have a chance. I wanted a family. I wanted a normal family. That's right. what I was looking for. Right. But I wanted the money, security, and I wanted all that. Right. But see, when you look at all that stuff, you don't get to know the person who's in front of you because you're looking at those things that you're looking for. Exactly. So the other things are hidden. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've they, gotten... They were, you were just, they were the priorities. And you yeah. weren't seeing the other important things that you needed exactly. to Exactly. It's the same thing with a, a man looking for a trophy wife. Yep. He's looking for the physical look, how she looks <laughs> dressed up, this, that, and the other. The other but you don't know the person you're about to marry, exactly. and then up, oh, you got the worst crazy lady in the world. Yep. <laughs> yep. She's hot, though. Exactly. <laughs> like that movie what, Gone Girl. Seen that movie? No. With Ben Affleck? No. Bro, never mind, bro. Shorty was nuts the whole movie. She killed Neil Patrick Harris. Shorty was nuts the whole movie. Gone Girl. Mm-hmm. That's exactly the kind of woman that we're talking mm-hmm. about. Like she was like a trophy white on the outside. She graduated mm-hmm. Harvard, everything like that, but she was nuts. Mm-hmm. Oh, because Ben Affleck cheated on her. She killed Neil Patrick Harris. She f- she tricked her husband into thinking that he was that she was missing. And then she came back after killing Neil Patrick Harris and, and the whole press found out that she wasn't missing and that she was found. And, that and sounds she, like a Lifetime movie. Well, <laughs> I don't watch well, Lifetime. Lifetime movies are lifetime crazy. Movies are crazy. <laughs> lifetime movies are actually... I am a crazy. Lifetime movie. I don't need yeah. to watch lifetime, lifetime movies. Lifetime movies are actually really, like, deep and good. They are very, very deep. Suspenseful. They are very deep. Crazy. But continue. Yeah, so... Um, Yeah, a lot of these mental illnesses that that people have, the suicidal tendencies goes with it. What people don't understand with people with suicidal tendencies is you don't know what is going on in their brain 24-7. 
People have things that are in their brain that they can't get rid of. They can't just let it go. Get over it. It's like telling somebody with cancer, get over it. No, they have to go through chemo and surgeries and everything to get to the healing. So um, people need to talk more. They need to, you know, find somebody that they can trust to talk to because not talking is it's horrible for people to keep these things inside. And that's why they're racing through your mind over and over and over again, because you've never gotten them out. You have to get them out in order to heal. Um, The healing that I've been working on, and the only reason I'm here sharing it is because I know for a fact that it's been working for me. Um, I see myself as a different person. I used to be very angry, and I was holding on to anger and grudges and why, and I don't understand this, and how come this happened, and just building up anger over every situation instead of, you know, just keeping certain people out of your life because they don't need to be there. You know, if people are abusive, get rid of them. Don't stay in the situation because it is damaging your soul. It's damaging your brain. Um, I've watched people get schizophrenic from abuse um, because they never left the situation and they just stayed. Um, Don't ever feel stuck. You're not stuck. Um, A lot of healing that I've been working on is meditation. When I have time, it is very important for me to meditate. I have to. I I have to clear my mind. Everything. Everybody, like especially people that that mm. have done dealt with like pain, loss, and, and mm-hmm. just all those type of things. Yep. Um, should do it, but I think everybody should meditate. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. We everybody. Meditation. Chakra. Yes. Anything for the mind, body. Yes. Soul, all that. Yes, where you bring yourself inner peace, right. and I have actually been learning to bring that inner peace even during a chaotic situation. That is happening. That's what the the great thing. I I went to the doctors. I gave the doctors sixteen years of my life of Xanax of every antidepressant. They didn't work for me. They made me a different person. I like to talk. That made me not talk. I was stuck in my head with nothing, yeah. like just staring, listening to everybody, numb, right? like nothing, like yeah. numb. If a funeral happened, you wouldn't even cry because you're just numb. Yep. Uh, I don't want to be that person. I want right. to be who I am. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, um, meditating became – I had to start going on YouTube, actually, and looking up guided meditations because my mind races so much, and it just goes – you know, like a lot of movies you guys are talking about, I can't watch because there's so much going on that it just brings me into my own things that I've gone through. And I'm like yeah. stiff as a board, stressed out. So I can't really watch them anymore. Like flash, I pretty much memories. sticks. Yeah. And then it's there for a while. Right. You know, once yep. it's brought up, it's like there for a week, a couple, you know, then you got nightmares, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so people need to slow down. They just need to, like the Beats and the, the Beats, the Jones, Joneses or whatever, that's that's not a good thing for people who have anxiety disorder and stuff like that. They need to downsize their world, so to speak. Look at what you need, that you have everything that you need so that you can breathe and not be like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Right. Because Prioritize a little better and just... Right, yeah, right, right. Something. But your own routine. It has to be your own yeah, routine. Recommended from a doctor, something right. That and your own. Your and this is this is. I believe this is a very important thing because on that I want to add that healthy diet as well. Yes. Other people some yes, and other people sometimes don't understand. You need your own routine. Yes. Like they don't understand because you you have to do things when you want to do them mm-hmm. and it take as long as you mm-hmm. want and you. Yes. Else's I time. battled this whole week. You know? This show, I battled the whole week in my mind. I was going to cancel. I was going to break down. I was going to this. I was going to that. And I just told myself, shut up. You're going to go do it. It's just another day. And I didn't stress over it like I I'm normally right. would right. have. You, you actually made it. Yeah. Well, you know, when I usually, when I write something down, give an exact date, I'm there because I'm not one to back out of things right. and look right. like a loser. But, um, but like sometimes not that you're a loser if you blacked out, backed out of anything. Over, you might overanalyze. <laughs> sometimes or something like that. Yes, you'll yeah. make even if it's just, you know, a fun trip out with your friends. Over obsess on something and then it, it I got to drive. What if something happens on the yeah. way there? What if something happens at the bar? I don't want to be there. Oh yeah, That's so exactly many things. It is. Lay down and go to bed. Well, what if the house catches on fire? How am I going to get the kids and where are we going? What windows are we going to get out? Right. 
Right. It's like people don't realize that when you've been through a lot of trauma, your brain is trained to look Think at the, the negative, yeah. pick the worst out of the whole situation. Yeah. Healing is changing your whole mindset. When you get a thought that's negative, you got to realize that you're having that thought. You got to push it right out, get out, don't give it any energy. I love it. It's almost word not, for word how I say it all the time, right? Yeah. Was that not like word for word how I always say it? Yes. You got to pull it out right away. You got to pick it out like it's a weed. That's it. In a garden because it'll take it. over your that's mind. It. Your mind is a garden. Yeah. That's it's it. like tennis balls coming at your face. Pick up the net, pull it back down. Yeah. <laughs> you feel it. Feel it, let it go, appreciate it, and let it go. Don't let that shit Like, you're not evolve. getting no more time from me. Evolve, it's going to take over. But you got it. Like, people with the illness, they have to. It is a must. Like, people get up and take their shower and get groomed. People who have anxiety and depression need to get up in the morning and clear their mind and put positive things in their mind because... Yeah. They say the first 15 minutes of your day, you're, like, how you think is going to determine your mm-hmm. mind of your day. My a first 15 minutes say, to the next few hours is battle and anxiety because it don't happen until I'm awake for about 15 minutes. And then when my mind starts going, I feel the anxiety kick in. Yep. And you just kick, you just got to talk yourself out of it. It's, it's, it's re-brainwashing is what I say. You have to re-brainwash yourself. And, like, people got mad because I'm taking negative off of my page on my Facebook. Well, it's my page. I need it to be positive because your negativity is killing me. I don't want to see damaged dogs and children yeah. and stuff like that. We yeah. know it's there. If you think sharing your post is going to help it, it's, it's just not. Like just I, get I out there and be the active. Because I know, like, the, cool, the news. People, like, you know, the old traditional way, like, my, my grandfather would look at me like I was crazy. You don't watch the news. What do you mean? Like, it's like the norm. I don't oh yeah, watch the news six o'clock. Be there. Know that you're going to tell me someone was shot. Mm-hmm. This one exactly. was mugged. Exactly. This place was broken into. Exactly. This car blew up. There exactly. was a big accident over here. I don't care. Donald Trump's president. I don't. Want it. Donald Trump's <laughs> Trump's I just don't. I don't do it. politics. I'm an ex bartender. <laughs> I don't do politics or religion. That's, that's, that's smart. <laughs> I'll talk. I'll talk spiritually with you like, all day, but we won't get in religion. Why <laughs> do I want to be reminded of all these negative tragedies? No. It's just so upsetting. Who cares? I already know it's there. And it's, There's never going to be a day it's not there. It's, it's always affecting a lot of people out there yeah, because a lot of people are damaged. And pe- like, people are all like, okay, say, like, you know, um, somebody who gets kidnapped and they were kidnapped for a couple of years or months or whatever, and they come back and everybody's like, yay, we're so proud of you, this, that, and the other. That's all great. Like, that person looks happy right at that moment. And all you are all there supporting that person at that moment. But once all the cameras are gone, all those supportive people left that person. And now that person's going to be left with their mind and the thoughts. And that's when they're going to need people is maybe 20 years from that time that that happened because it's been going through their mind for 20 years now, you know. So people, people need to understand. They, don't get it. they need to understand because guess what? Your world is going to be totally out of control, out of whack if yeah. you let the crazy get out of crazy. Yeah. You know, it's it's you have to take control of it, and and the only way to do it is to help other people understand them. You know, don't don't um, don't bash them. You know, oh, just get over it. Don't don't push their feelings aside because we all have feelings, yeah. and and they're legit. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. But yeah, definitely healing is breathing. We need to concentrate on breathing. Um, I really honestly do need to concentrate on breathing and to breathe because I hold my breath. People who have anxiety hold their breath when they're going through something or they're just doing something. It just becomes a habit. And then, and then Everything becomes habit. You feel more tense. You're tense, and, you're not, right, and then you're shaking, and then you're sweating, and then, yeah, and then comes the panic attacks and all that. You have to breathe, and once you start feeling yourself not breathing right, is when you have to grab a hold of it and just, right. you know, because you you yeah. you, you seem to. Yes, breath, breath is what we our bodies need that right. oxygen. So of course we're going to feel better when we breathe in a full breath and let it go. And as you're breathing in, you're actually concentrating on your breathing. You're talking to yourself about your breathing and you're getting your mind off of whatever brought you to that anxiety. Oxygen and, and your bloodstream and stuff like that. Yeah. It's, it's really important spiritually and, and, and biologically and chemically that you mm-hmm. take deep breaths whenever mm-hmm. you're feeling anxious because like 
They say in chakra meditation even that it's very important for you to take deep breaths for your for your blood to flow and for your, your mind to keep moving and so you can focus more on visualizing and stuff like that. Right. Because the, the, the longer breaths you're taking, the more full breaths you're taking, the, the easier your mind is mm -hmm. and the easier it is to, to visualize on what you need for your chakra meditation. Like, like they say in chakra meditation that you're supposed to feel and visualize every single chakra glowing mm -hmm. from your from your um your bottom chakra coccyx to, yeah to your to your all the way up yeah to your halo chakra and the more you breathe the more you can actually feel that energy going up your spine mm -hmm. and it's honestly like once you get into a routine of chakra meditation mm -hmm. you really can feel it bro mm -hmm. and the what the minute you start to realize that like it's possible for you to not exist in any universe but yours is the moment you're like it's you know, awesome you feeling like everything else is an awesome feeling you just exist and that's it have you other people don't like it you know because you're ignoring them but i challenge you to do seven days of chakra meditation quietly in your room with just a guided meditation bro and then after every single meditation session when you open your eyes and realize that you are just in a different world mm -hmm. it's going to change you bro mm -hmm. it really does change you and I haven't done it. I haven't done chakra meditation in months, and I can feel it. I can feel like a little bit of the poison coming back into my mm -hmm. life. I'm starting to need self validation. My mm -hmm. emotions are running a little mm -hmm. bit ragged, and I'll I'll tell you straight up, like chakra meditation and prayer. Yes. To, to my God, power, absolutely, definitely absolutely. Gave me a lot more peace within my mind and with my mental illness yeah. and with stuff like. I, I identified with a, lot a of deep stuff. relationship with God, though. You're not talking go to church on Sunday and talk. You're talking about getting up in the morning and saying thank you, God, and and, yeah. and looking at what you have and and you know praising Him Every and all that day, throughout the day. Throughout the day. Throughout bro. the day. Every single time I go to work, bro, before mm -hmm. I start working, I'm so anxious because I hate my job so much. But then I realized I have to pray on why my job is so good because I have a son. And I get to take care of him because of my job. Yes. I get to do studio sessions because of my job. Yes. I get to do amazing things with my girlfriend because of my job. I get to have this this radio station because of my job. So my job may be a shit show, but look at all the beautiful things this shit show brings mm -hmm. to me. You mm -hmm. feel me? Right. And the more I thank God and for the process and the more I'm grateful for all of the things that are happening, good and bad, because they all make you the person that you are the more my mind is eased. Like, whenever, mm -hmm. I, whenever I'm having doubt or discouragement, I ask God, or, or even when I feel ang or angry or arrogant, mm -hmm. I ask God to take that away from me. Yes. Because it's not, conducive yes. To, it's not conducive to my mental illness, my relationship with the Lord, or my relationship with, the, with other people. Right. Especially people that I love. Right. You feel me? I don't yep. want to take my, arrogant, my arrogance or my anger or my Absolutely. out on people that mm -hmm. I love. And I learned so much from my girlfriend and people like you. Mm -hmm through your selflessness and through your story because my girlfriend's been through a lot of the stuff she can that you've been through mm -hmm. like you guys can identify with a lot of stuff like and so can I as well and there's been times where I've been through things in my life that I didn't recognize that they made me the person that I am like you said it last your last show. We are who we went through. We yeah, what right. we go through builds up who we are, yep. and what our road is. Right. And I really honestly believe that people who have been through a lot need to help others that go through things they do. Yeah. because they have so much wisdom. And that's why we go through things. And mm -hmm. it's sad. And into in, in our world, it seems unfair. it is sad because there's terrible things out there that happen to people that yeah. people don't realize that this is the kind of lives that people they don't. You didn't grow up in the household that you grew up where everything was nice and hunky dory and your family went to babies. college and you know, everybody's great. It don't work that Trust way for babies. every family. Trust fund and baby, is that what that about. is? Trust fund baby. <laughs> yeah. And then there's damn right what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But like my my girlfriend and myself, we've been through so many things and um I asked her, like, why are you so selfless? Why why is it so easy for you to stop being so angry? All of a sudden, and, um, I'm good. Thanks. She, Hi. she told me that I go through. She said I go through so much in my day with my mental illnesses that I see no reason in being angry at something someone does to me for that long, because it'll just add on to my mental illnesses. That person is out there not giving a fuck about what just made me about what just made me angry. But here just I am. took you to here damn you near are. a stroke. Yeah, yeah. You are Who cares? Sitting, right, sitting in yeah. Pain. Because of that other person. Suffering for the so next week. To you or your, your future or your life or exactly. anything. Exactly. She even does that for me. Whenever me and her have a fight or I get angry at her or she gets angry at me, 
15 minutes later to an hour, we're good. Unless both, unless one of us is having a real bad mental health day, when we argue, we still say, like, we tell each other that we love you, even in our argument. Mm -hmm. There's sometimes where we argument, where we argue for the betterment of each other. We just had an argument the other day, like, because I was mad that, I was mad that she didn't understand that I would always be able to compromise with her and stuff. Because stuff like driving, working so much, and then going to shows in Philly and other places in New Jersey. Right, like you'll around. work it out. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll make it, out. it stresses her out sometimes. And I'll tell, I tell her, like, listen, some of these shows aren't as important as other ones. Right. I can cancel some of these. Right. We can stay home tonight. Right. You know, right. your mental health is just as important as mine. Absolutely. And that's anybody out there. Yeah, you know, I respect that you, um, um, you see that though. Compromise is very important in a relationship. Compromise, watching whose energy you have around you because they can bring you down very easy. Yep. You I'll, know, I'll tell you right now, bro, that I don't I don't try and compare mental illnesses or experiences, but the things that my girlfriend has gone through and the things that this woman has gone through, I could not walk in their shoes. No. And the fact that they wake up every day is an accomplishment. And it's, not a, only it, like, it's a blessing. I congratulate people yeah, that exactly. have gone through that you know stuff. Mean? I would. I probably would have offed myself in certain situations. I've tried. I've tried, and I've lost my children. Um, I'm sorry to hear that. That's okay. Um, they'll get older, and hopefully they'll come back. I had to walk away from abusive people because they were making me suicidal again, and I won't be around people like that anymore. You so, you, you know, I look forward to that day that my child's old enough to make their own decisions, and um, I'm blessed for having the time that I did have with my children. I've been blessed with children since I was little. You know, I was a live-in nanny. Um, I was a babysitter, so I know adults now who I babysat, and they're like, I'm so glad you were in my life. You know, you never realize how important you really are to somebody. Even, like, the, you think, like, you're this big, you know, this minute little thing, and then you see this person as an adult, and they're like, wow. Something that you did you, has impacted them in such a if way. If you weren't in my life, I would have never known don't Period. Like the time you talked about scene. your teacher from years ago, and he out. doesn't even know that you still know him or even give a shit about him, mm -hmm. that he has relevance to your life, but you still remember that teacher for what he said. Or Absolutely. Did. You know what I mean? Absolutely. That reminded me of that. Yeah. yeah. And we need, so we need to be the positive. Yes, yes, yes. To where they've been through a lot more than I've been through. Wow. And they were able to get through that and handle it because and become an adult said. and be better. You know, like the one girl, she's a realtor now. And what she came from, God blessed her, you yeah. know. God blessed her, and she's That's a beautiful amazing. mother and has a beautiful soon-to-be husband, you know, when they can afford it, but doing great things and very loving still. And right. that's a big part of it, too, is to stay loving and to keep that love. Yeah. Because once that love dies, this whole world's done. <laughs> the truth. You know, um, but I did Stop open up a page, everything. you know, if anybody needs to talk need some advice or you know even if you want to just hop on the page and help others um it's called healing hearts and souls together uh everybody, I opened go, it. everybody go follow this right now i opened it this past week so that i could have something that people could go to if they needed to talk or anything and but it's on facebook it's on facebook healing hearts and souls together um and let's help people that's what i want to be i want to i want to make everything that i've gone through i want to make there a reason for it Am I um? Am I already in that group? I think I invited you. I think I invited everybody on the f okay. on the um on my friends list. I was just gonna check. Awesome. Awesome. But yeah, definitely. And even like I said, even tune in on there and help somebody else out because everybody's been through something different, and um, somebody might need to hear something other than what I have to say. You know, you might have been through something that can help somebody else. But definitely, let's let's heal together and and let's help people heal. I love that. Can we give her a round of applause? Oh, yay! Thank you. Because that, uh, that was amazing. It takes a lot for someone to actually come up and share their story because a lot of people live in that, they have the anxiety, mm -hmm. and they live in that fear mm -hmm. of, first off, the stigma. You know, mm -hmm. what are people going to think if I tell my story? Yeah. Are they going to understand? Don't worry about what they think. Exactly. Don't you worry know, about it. Just be in your own, right, the meditation, I'm sure, helped you understand that. Absolutely. Those, those people don't matter. You can't be in pain because of what you think of other no, it's people. Not, it's not you know, fair to, it's one thing to, to stay in, pain, in the pain because... And care and be respectful of other people's, you know, thoughts and what would this person think if I was yeah. rude or not. 
Yeah. But it's a totally different thing. Like, it's yeah. not even about integrity. Yeah. This is about I can't live in pain because of somebody else. Exactly. You know, exactly. I have to live in my body. Exactly. And, and worry about my health. Exactly. Can I ask you a question? So sure. What was it like? What, what did it do to your mind when you, when you went through all the sexual assault and stuff like that? Um... Because I was, I was molested as a young child. The only thing that really affected me, like the sexual molestation didn't bother me at the moment when I was a child because I was so young well, and I didn't understand it. But when I was raped at 14, it was devastating because I was just like, no. And he was taking it anyway. And, you know, there's a guy sitting in the front seat at the steering wheel and he's like, I guess he's in shock. It was one of his friends. And... um it was a scary situation because I'm telling you that you can't take it and you're taking it anyway. You know, um, uh, yeah, like anything. I, 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 when I was molested, like I look at an old man, most people look at old men like grandpops. I didn't grow up with a grandpop. So I look at an old man as a pervert because I was molested by an old man when I was younger. And it makes perfect sense. It's not your fault. No, it's not your fault. And that's another thing, Nick. People don't ask for these things to happen to them it's not their exactly. fault That's you know what i mean but then they want to throw a movie on with all the exact th- same things you were talking about in the movie and, and be like yeah get over it yeah yeah we can't dismiss what people yeah, yeah. When I was it needs to be child. taught in schools now. It really does. I mean, it's great they're teaching about I think they money and have everything. Health classes. They're starting yeah. to bring in meditation school. into schools. We, we, we just had that conversation today at the suicide walk. We should do it. We yeah. should do it. By the way, we went out. Um, not to change the subject, but real quick, we went out to uh, the Out of the Darkness Suicide Prevention Walk today in yeah. Philadelphia. I've seen that. Um, I've every, seen that. Yeah, it's That's every awesome. um, every year they have it. I went last year. Um, and I went this year again. It's amazing. So we saw a lot of – it was a success. We met a lot of cool people out there, some people that are actually going to be on upcoming episodes on the show. Yeah, hopefully. Um, yeah. But, uh, like I was saying, um, when I was molested as a kid, I didn't really, like um, – I'm not going to say I didn't understand what was going on because I was exposed to sex when I was, like, super young. Yeah. my mom was a health teacher, so mm-hmm. I just knew about it. Mm-hmm. But um, – during the time it was happening, I kind of just thought it was like a game. Like yeah, I thought, exactly. Yeah, I thought it happened to everybody. Exactly. Else, you know, and um. You think it's normal? Yeah, and and it didn't really hit me that it that it wasn't normal. And when until, you find out it's not when you normal, get older, right, then it up. starts hitting you, right. and it does because you know then you get into relationships, and now you don't know you know it ruins and you start relationships. Doing things and you realize why, right? Mm-hmm. Dad, plus my dad mm-hmm. cheating on my mom and leaving to start another family really it, it put a really bitter taste and and certain like domestic yeah. abuse things that happened in my yeah. life it put a really bitter taste in my mouth about women you know it, it made me a really a really big misogynist in my yeah. life in like 16 17 mm-hmm. old, like days like that it made me very mentally abusive it made me very um very charismatic but also very manipulative and very um um I, I had a lot of animosity for women. I kind of, you know how like rappers will objectify women and, and, and try and glorify it. I lived that life, but it wasn't anything fun like how rappers tried to make it fun. Mm-hmm. It was very dark. Mm-hmm. It was very, very depressing. Yeah. yeah. Because here I am, especially when you f- actually fall in love. Yeah. Because you have no idea how to process it. Because you spent your life hating a certain group of people for for so long, but not knowing why. You feel right. me? We gotta stop hating, 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 hating. Stop the, hating. Understanding on people. We have to understand. Look, my brother just killed himself two two weeks ago. I found out he killed himself two years ago. He was one of my molesters. Apparently, he got caught molesting his daughter, his stepdaughter, for years and killed himself because he was about to go to jail. So I don't, you know, being a victim from him. Okay, I always thought, you know, he's a kid, he didn't know better, but apparently he wasn't. He went through his life with abusing his stepdaughter, which is horrible, um, and then in the end didn't want to face his, the, you know, what was going to happen to him. Yeah, I'm like, you did all this, now stand up and face what you did. You took that away from her. You know what right. I mean? Like, she was getting she her to, justice, to you took that, that away her from life. her. Yeah, so, I, I, you know, I, heal. People, we got to heal people. Yep. You know, that's my for anybody that doesn't know, my whole um, my artist name is Shu and it stands for Henda. You want to give it to him? It's 
stop hating on everything. I know you get excited to stop hard on enemies. What's stop up? hating on everything. Start helping others every day. And if you don't, we're going to stop hard on enemies. And I always thought it was because you were a Schumacher. <laughs> well, it is, it, is, it is shortened because of my last name, but that's what it stands for. Stop okay. hating on everything. Start helping others every day. Awesome. I love that that's your last Stop name. Stop hard on enemies. That's awesome. I love that that's your last name and that that's your right name. They meant, like, what la- shit like what that. last name? No <laughs> government. <laughs> no, no, no. It means like you are destined to be a rapper. <laughs> no, that's it. Like, it's so crazy. But, like, that's why I rap about certain things the way that I do, like, my, my content, my solo content, like, besides from the music that me and Nick do together, is very dark and very depressive and very brutally honest about sexual interactions with women and mm-hmm. how I felt about those mm-hmm. interactions and how I felt about being in love and mm-hmm. how I felt about one night, one night stands. Right. And, and from a, a weaker mindset perspective, you would take some of my music or some of the lyrics that I have in my phone and, and, and try and emulate that. But yeah, they I'm can. To make a young man understand that no matter what a young man goes through, this is how you should There's never hope. treat a woman. Right. And there is hope for you to Yes, hear. absolutely. Absolutely. Because um, no absolutely. No woman should ever be abused or manipulated in any kind of way no. because of someone else's strife or plight. No. It's just not fair. People unfortunately try to do it to it, you know, for advancement or for their own insecurities or whatever mm-hmm. reasons they're, you know, they're dealing with, but people try to get over on others every day, you know what I mean? Yeah, they don't want to look at themselves yet either, though. Yeah. You know, they're not ready to take a look at themselves. That was the hardest part of my life. With narcissists, there's a lot of narcissistic people out yep. there, and they can't. I just read not that long ago that there's no cure for narcissism. That really sucks, by the way. I know, um, I know actually a few of them. You just walk around feeling like you're be- better than everybody. Because you never look at yourself. You're always blaming somebody right. else there's for no everything. There's no. That's Zero accountability. I Nothing. Myself. I had to really look in the mirror and, mm-hmm. and, and, and take responsibility for some of the Absolutely. things that I put into my own Absolutely. life. Absolutely. I blamed God. I blamed my father. I blamed... Hurt people hurt people. Exactly. Exactly. You know? And, and it's it not meant to. No. It's right. not like hurt we go out and say, I'm a damage this person, this person, this person today. Hurt people hurt people. My therapist used to say, you know, everybody's got a temper and they're like, tick, 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 boom. And they were like, you, you're boom. Because you're so full, but you're so full that there is no room. You know what I mean? That you don't have room, so it's automatic on survival mode, defense mode, attack mode, fight or flight mode. You get stuck there after you have so many traumas happen to you. You have to work your way out of it. You just think the worst is going to happen all the time. And you got to change that. Yep. You got to change that. And that's not, unfortunately, how it really is. No. Well, we have people need help, you know. Yeah. People got to talk. They got to talk to somebody. And if somebody comes and talks to you about mental health issues, don't push them away. Um, don't push away their emotions and their feelings. You know, just let them get out what they need to get out and just be there for them. Right, exactly. You know. Yeah, I think it's really important that we start unifying and coming together and telling people not only about mental illnesses but just their life stories. Because when you share, when you share things that you've never shared before – you finally get them off your chest you can feel the healing starting to happen even if it doesn't happen like instantaneously at least you made that step later on you're gonna be like oh my god why do i feel like no anxiety right now because you got it out it's like crying men don't be ashamed to cry god gave us all tear ducts for a reason it's to cleanse our souls to cleanse the emotions you You felt better though right (laughs) but how much better did you feel after I cried. I said, "Why me?" I, I yelled to the top of my lungs. I lost my voice for like a day. But I swear to God. Afterwards, you felt like a new man, though, didn't I felt you? So great. I yep. was more motivated than ever. I stopped caring about the validation I needed from yep. other people. And even though there was still and is still a little bit of discouragement and despair left in my pit, like left in my gut, it'll always be there I'm because it, you know? exactly. Because if I don't work through it, it'll just build. Exactly. At least exactly. It yes. At, at a we got to empty the tank. Uh-huh. Yeah, you, really you know, and if, yeah. And at least not empty it, put it halfway down. The it's drain. like it's yeah. like I almost look at it like I can use the analogy of like a computer. If you don't, you know how you have to empty the trash can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, if you if you let like no more too memory many files and write all that <laughs> stuff build up, it starts running real slow, not yep. the way it's supposed to. Yeah, you just start getting distorted in your mind. That's, yes, that's how you yes. you just move at a slower pace because you you're you're taking on so much. 
Yeah. You got to empty it. You got to empty it. And definitely, you know, we can control our brains. Our brains don't can have have control over us. I'm glad you said that because there's a lot of people that believe they don't have control over it. They don't have control over it. You do. You do have control over it. You You do. do. Drop the crutch. You do have control over it. We can't play victim anymore. We can't. And it's not okay to just go to the doctors and get a medicine because, you know, that's just putting a a Band-Aid on the wound. If it needs surgery, it needs surgery. Rip out the wound, get it over with, work through it, and move on, you know, and just keep positive. And know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. You know, there definitely is. I've always told people that, um, and don't take this in like a pessimistic way or anything, I've always told people that death is the most peaceful thing in the world for someone who suffers from mental illness. Not because they've been traumatized or, well, yeah, but because Because their mind shuts down. Think ever again. They don't ever have to worry about what someone thinks about them. They don't ever have to worry about. That's something deep to think about. But at the same time, the reason I don't like it is life to the fullest. Exactly. The reason I don't like that is because you're just putting that thought out there, and that could perpetuate suicide. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't like that. No, we're stronger than that. We can get through. This is what it is. You got to take it moment for moment. You know how alcoholics and stuff like that. They say just for today. Well. People with anxiety and depression and stuff, they have to live for it just for this moment. Just for this moment, I'm going to breathe. You know, we could do something like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. It would be an amazing thing. I would like to somehow play a role in, like, you know, possibly colleges or or high schools getting, like, a mental health class. Absolutely. I want to do that. We need that, bro. We We need to do it. That's what we need to do. And we're right now, we're telling the world to go do that before we do it right now. And I don't know why we're doing that. We should probably keep it to ourselves and go do that. Nah, put it out there. That way you're like, I had it out there. I got to do it. Yeah, right. if someone else did it. Now, now I got to hold myself accountable because I just told the world I'm going to do it. Well, that's okay. I have to do it. I'll never tell anybody live that I'm going to do something and not do it. I'm going to yeah. tell you that. Yeah. Anything I've ever said in the last three years, if, if I'm going to tell you right now because I, I haven't had social media before that. But anything I've said, I will do. That that's I promise awesome. You. If I haven't already done it, I will 100% do it. So wait, hey, I'm right there for any kind of support. You've only had social media for like that. three or four years? Yeah, three years. Really? Yes. No way. I mean, I had like a MySpace back in the day, but that was it. I got rid of that shit. Oh, my God, he said MySpace. <laughs> I never I never got I never um, got a Facebook when everybody <laughs> makes, made Facebook. No, nah, none of that. What did you do? I've only been on it for like four years, too. Live life. Honestly, mm-hmm. life's better without it. It really is because you just you don't have that. Like, I felt like I, I had a strong sense of what life was really about i didn't have that false image that we were exactly talking about. Like, the false the illusion it wasn't it wasn't so much in my face every day yeah so i was just more i didn't like honestly it helped out with with uh i was less stressed man it was yeah. just life was better you know yeah and so life is so much better without social media it really is because you just all you do is jump into the the bucket of crabs when you go on social media you know you're just like in there you just see all the competition and, and all it's the time. It's 5 o'clock. So. We should start just using social media to tell people when we're dropping music and then nothing else. I really hate it. <laughs> like, I hate drop, it. That's what I'm trying to do right when now. I, when I get to the point where I can afford for somebody to just do it, I'm just going to pay someone to do it. Hey, go post shit for me. I don't want to do it. And I'll never turn Hey, back. listen. Never back if you don't be the positive to set that example, then how's anybody going to do it? You got, you know, if if you if you take your positivity off of social media, then that's leaving room for more that's negative. Positive. That is a great point. Yes. That is a great point. Keep your keep your you know positive what? out there so that people that need it. So see what it. I'm a, so what that means to me is so I got to focus on my my own mental health and at the same time still have my positivity on there. I just have to build a team of people and pay them they got to put my positivity on the internet. There you go. So I don't have to do it, but they can do it. They can stress out over it. Me and I don't have to hey, there you go. Me and Nick had a pretty profound conversation uh, earlier today. And we, uh, I told him that whenever I would come off tour, like it, when we get to that point and we have to do six to eight months and nine month tours, it's going to put a, de- a damper on my mental health because I have mm-hmm. to find out. It does for everybody. It's I have bad. to find a new routine. You know? Absolutely. I have to... I have to readjust my mind to, to a fast-paced climate, to a fast-paced yes. Jump out of your comfort zone. Exactly. And I told him that when I come back home, I'm going to have a house set up, a small rancher, and a small beat-up car, mm-hmm. and just go into that house. And, and knock them out for like a week. <laughs> I'm just going to destroy it. And Wait, just, they have those um those rooms now, like the escape room. They got the, the, I forget what it's called, but you go in there and you just... 
No. Uh, yes. yes. They have places you can go yes. and just hit shit? Yes. Yeah. We need to go do that. Yeah, dude. I swear. Because it just would be fun. You know what I mean? Yeah, Why it not? is. And it's really, really healthy for you. Picking like, TVs up, throwing them. Wow. People don't do oh, that. Oh, man, that'd be great. That. Yeah, yeah. People <laughs> have to understand that holding in anger is really unhealthy for you. And you need to it let is. out that aggression. It really is. You know, do you remember, um, like, years ago, do you remember Adam's house? We had a de- demolition party. Yeah, yes, yeah, I do remember, remember that. that. Remember do you remember the up on the seal, yep. up on the roof? Yep. <laughs> yeah, I was just telling him about that today. That was great. Yeah. That was great. We like messed the whole house up. Yeah. See, we should like rent That's buildings fun. or something that they're ready to demolish and just right. have a, a bashing party. It's a really good idea. It it's really fun. is a good idea, bro. Imagine how many people are just holding in so much anger and, 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 and they don't want to break their phone anymore you don't want to throw your remote That's why you, you don't to to music. it could hit somebody that you didn't mean music to hit everything music <laughs> is everything music is a great thing to get everything. through things it really is you've never been in a mosh pit before i cannot i was you ever been punched in the face I've been by in a mosh another pit. dude who i've been in a mosh pit crazy. it's so fun man yes like bro Getting punched in the face and punching another dude in the face, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then smoking a blunt. With the it's same exhilarating, face. isn't it? It is exhilarating. Afterwards, it's so crazy. Bro. No police are called. None. Right. You feel me? And it's like a big. It's like the most functional, dysfunctional family, bro. Right. Like you guys go at each other. You 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 eat you eat each other's face off in the pit. And the minute that concert is done, you hug each other and everything's cool. Everything. Yeah, That's I've gone to good. school with a friend in a cast and be like, "Oh, hey, sorry about yesterday." <laughs> you no, know, like it's, That's so it's, crazy. it's really a family, bro. It's really a family. And it's cool. I couldn't do it today, but back in the day, it was fun. Right. I'm not getting another mosh pit for as long as I'm. Yeah, they're rough. So fun. They're rough. <laughs> you tell me, I had my hardcore days when I was 18. I'm you done. too. Yeah. Exactly like that, bro. I've worked 10 hours a day at a factory, so like it's. That's why we need to get rich, bro. So I can. So I can. We're already rich, but we're gonna get there. Yeah. In in the mind, I meant. Well, oh, oh my God. So, again, um, I just want to thank you for coming up. That was amazing. Thanks for having uh, me. I really appreciate you sharing your story. Uh, it takes a lot for somebody to do that because people are scared of the stigma. So, you're definitely doing something right. So Thank keep, you. keep on that page. Thank you. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Um, for anybody that doesn't follow, you want to tell everybody where to follow you and the, the page. And the page again. It is Healing Hearts and Souls Together. It's on Facebook. Everybody um, go follow that page. Yeah, and it's it's just a place, you know, anybody can go and put your emotions on. We're going to do some things on this site. My niece is going to help me out with it because I'm not too technically literate <laughs> so i have to have a young and you want to um you want to say to the people like any last yeah just just have hope and like i said live for the moment don't look into the future and say oh my god i'm gonna have another 20 years of this mental illness because you need to you may not be here tomorrow you right. know god god's gonna take you when he wants you when he's ready for you um yeah, too many people don't, don't live in the now yeah the, have the hope there's the hope future change your thoughts it's definitely yep. about changing your thoughts and definitely go on youtube and look up some guided um meditation they got all kind of music on there you like indian flutes they got indian flutes you like piano they got piano so That's yeah a really good idea a lot but of um that. yeah um all right one last thing i just want to say to everybody that tuned in and listened um you're not alone there's people out there that care there's always someone out there that that gives a shit Reach about out. you um, don't ever think you're – don't ever think – I don't care what, what kind of low you're going through or how low you are. Don't ever think that nobody loves you or, or nobody cares about you. Like there's always someone that does care. You just have to reach out. Um, just keep that in mind. And I'm always available. I don't care what time of day it is. I don't care if it's 2, 3, 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning. You can reach out to me anytime. You can reach out to Josh anytime. Um, and I'm sure you can reach out to Dana anytime. Absolutely. And she would, you know, just – be grateful to help you out um, because we know what it's like to go through certain things and um, and we're here for you. With that said, um, Hendo and I have some really exciting things to announce. I don't want to um, be too premature with this, but we're going to be dropping 
our first single to our EP. Um, Yay. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say we're gonna say like first week of November. First week of November, we're gonna drop um, the awesome. first single to our EP, our mental health EP. We're not gonna tell you the name of the single yet. I think we already we already told you the name of the EP, so we might as well say it again. The name of the EP is it's, All Dreams Hold Destiny. It's ADHD, All yes. Dreams Hold Destiny. That's awesome. So, so that is awesome. We're very excited to uh, to drop that. So stay tuned. Yeah, uh, we have solo projects coming. I'm working on. Um, I have Dream. Obviously, you guys have been waiting forever for that, so you'll get that soon. I'm working on Dream 2. I'm not going to give you too much on that. It's a totally different concept. I'm also working on a mixtape of just raw mainstream this beats. This man is out here slaughtering industry beats on all y'all, like 2008 Drake. I mean, 2008 Wayne and Drake. But this man is crazy. He's a monster. Y'all don't want no smoke. I'm really, yeah, I'm really trying to um, just... I. So I want to actually say something really dope. So the other day I put a post on Facebook... And I wanted everybody to know that I did this for them. I feel like because my fans waited so long, I've been preaching, um, you know, how I'm going to drop Dream. And, and for the last, what's it been, like a year, eight months? I've been Has it been that long? I, I'm pretty sure I've been talking about this album for the last eight, maybe seven months. Um, so for everybody that waited so long and stuck with me and didn't give up, because I know what that's like when you're waiting for one of your favorite artists or just a, a artist you're inspired by or motivated to listen to their music and they don't drop anything for a while and you kind of give up on them like damn like you kind of yeah. get like a little upset with that guess person. you're not doing it anymore right I guess yeah. you're not doing it or, or yeah. just you know you're not going to give me I'm what I need right now problem with Tory Lanez right now Right, and and I know how that feels when one of your one of your favorite artists isn't dropping anything. You kind of get like a little resentment built up towards them. So for everybody that is that has stuck with me all the way, I decided to do something special for my fans and the people that actually support me, um, you know, on on my social media. And for those people, what I'm doing is I just dropped a post the other day, and I told them to give me a beat that they would like to hear me rap over. So I'm rapping over every single one of those beats, and. The, the compilation of the best ones that I choose. That's it could be, be awesome. 20, it could be 30 of them. I'm putting them on one mixtape and basically it's my fans just hand selected those beats and crafted my whole mixtape for me. So you're going to get to tell your friends and all your people that, hey, I gave him that beat and I told him to rap over them. So awesome. I, also have two I did that for everybody. I also have two sort of things I'm working on. I'm, I'm the sad rapper Whenever me and Nick actually get together, I talk about a really lot of like a lot of inspirational things. But you're like Eeyore. I am. I'm very much the Eeyore of the group. Like, um, like my solo music is very, very Eeyore-ish. I'm super sad all the time. Like, like, like the weekend times ten. Like, yeah. I'm so sad. And um, I have an EP coming out called Samples of Sadness, and it's literally a six-song EP with some of my favorite samples. Like songs like the Weekend, Erica Badu to you know like old jazz bands and stuff like. I that. love Erica Badu. Mm. She's my favorite. Mm. Um, so do I. And the Weekend's old music is so amazing. Mm. So um, I'm working on that, and I'm also working on a tribute mixtape for XXX Tentacion and my friend who passed, Bo Riley. And love saying that. I love saying his name, Pauls. Um, Tentacion. The reason I chose to make that mixtape is because Ice's life was very impactful to me, and I never knew I could listen. This man talks about this guy every day, I, I every single. I've never went through a whole 24 hours without Hendo talking about XXX. XXX. I have him tatted on my stomach. <laughs> I have him tatted on my stomach. Oh this wow! Man loves this guy. <laughs> but um, I decided to make this tape for both of them because there were some, there were both two people that impacted my life and made me want to make music better, like be a better musician and go harder than I was before with this music and I know a lot of people are suffering from not only Bo's loss but X's loss so I wanted to do this for people so the the, re the, the tape is going to be a bunch of remixes with X, X's beats Lil Sky's beats and um, some of like some original beats maybe one or two and it's just going to be like a, a tribute mixtape and it's going to talk about Bo it's going to talk about X's life it's going to talk about the impact they both had on my life and I, I really hope you guys gravitate to it and love it because I've been working on it for a while and I'm just now announcing it and I'm just now announcing Samples of Sadness. Samples of Sadness is halfway done. You guys are going to get that very soon. 
I'm excited to listen to that. I'm excited to hear it all. No trap songs on it at all. No trap songs. (laughs) That's a good thing. A couple shout outs I want to give. Big, big shout out to Logic for dropping Young Sinatra 4. That shit was so fire. Um, Big shout out to my nappy hair. And uh, yeah, natural that, that, is beautiful. That's the logic that we all needed. Like he, he just shreds that. For anybody that isn't a Logic fan yet, or um, you know, hasn't really dove deep enough into his music, you need to go listen to Young Sinatra for that shit's crazy. Especially if you're a if you're a Boom Bap fan. If you're a um, like he can pretty much. He's he's a versatile dude, and I just I love his his positivity and his message. Um, big big shout out to. Um, uh, Dave East and Styles P just dropped a project, and that shit was heat. Um, I was a huge fan of the whole thing, and I have to say, honestly, next week I think we're going to compare that and Freddie versus Jason. So Jada and Fab teamed up versus Dave East and Styles P, and we're going to talk about which one's better. Um, and shout out to my man, too. T.I., the king of the South, just dropped a project called Dime Trap. And for those of you that don't know, T.I. is one of my biggest influences growing up. I love T.I. I love T.I. more than a lot of a lot of artists. T.I. is the best artist in the South ever. The only reason I say that, I would normally say Andre 3000, but I can't say that because he never, outside of Outkast, he never made a solo project. And I love Andre, and I think he's so talented, but I have to give it to T.I. because lyricist-wise... Sure, we can go with like a, I could I could go with like a Psy High to Prince or um, Big Crit, but I'm telling you right now, Ti is the most successful and the best hip hop artist out of the South, and Very I think he's successful. even bigger than that. Bigger than that. Another business family. Yep, I love everything he does. I have so much respect for the man. What he does for his family, I mm-hmm. like the business side of him. Yeah. he's very smart and witty. Um, his music is amazing. This album, I need you guys to go check it out. It's amazing. This is. I, I want to talk more about it next week, but uh, we're going to wrap things up, guys. Um, thanks for tuning in. We're uh, we're live every Sunday, 3 to 5 p.m. Check us out, The Connection, and make sure you get everybody connected. Go follow us on Instagram right now at the underscore connection underscore radio show. Um, go follow me on my Instagram at shoe 856 That's S-H-O-E 856. Go follow Hendo at Hendo 609 underscore... Um, go follow our radio show, The Underscore Connection. Underscore. I, already, I just said that. I don't care. We're going to say it again. He's so sad. We need, we need them to understand that they need to get Yeah, you, need to, you guys need to get connected and tell everybody about this show because we're really, we're really trying to take – if you care about people, if you care about your circumstance, you care about the people around you, the, the wealth of their mindset, you care about their mental health, then please tell everybody about the show and go follow the show right now. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll catch you guys next week. We love y'all.